No, it's good. I'm just going to make sure it's on the blanket. Wow. It's a, it's a it's, you know, people put their purses on floors and... What? Oh hey. my god, you're like my husband. Thank you. Ugh. Where's your ass been that you sit down? Where is your ass been? Well, I just, where, who knows where you sit with your ass It's indoor right? clothes. I have indoor clothes. Oh, you do. It's my indoor clothes. So you don't take these clothes anywhere else. It, just working it out. I know you're not recording now because you're still setting up. Uh, I don't know if you're recording. Always recording. Okay. You don't have to be. Mm -hmm. What's that statue? That's a little black family. That's nice. Yeah. So the, the truth is... We've conditioned our kids to only like dolls of the color of skin that we are, and I think that's kind of sad. So I got a black family to play with. Okay, that's good. My haircut like really worked for a little while. Then it started growing out, and this side just stayed right, like right here. And then this side was just growing out. You know why? It's because everything on the left side, because it's closer to the heart, grows stronger and faster. That's not because of my cut. That just meant because your hormones, your, your heart was pumping extra, extra strong. You may have noticed a lot of other things on your left side. Lots, a lot of times a man, when he gets a varicocele, it's usually in his left testicle for that same reason. I can't tell what you're... I can't tell you. What no, you no, I'm serious. Shut up, Rick. Are you? Yeah. All right, did you want a tea, a water, or what do you want? I'd love a tea. Okay. Hold on, let me... Uh... These are nice. I know. They're really comfortable. What's this trophy? Uh, one of many uh, comedy basketball league trophies. Uh, look at the camera for a sec. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's right. You said that really forcefully. I if I had put it down on an area that it absolutely was not That's an indoor eat. tray. Wow. That's okay. an indoor tray, lady. How do you keep track of what's indoor and what's outdoor? Anything that was outdoor, if it's not clean, is outdoor. Yeah, but you're gonna get cross-contamination no matter what you do. Not if I don't let anyone inside and if I don't live my life outside of my bubble. Okay? <laughs> if you're stressed, things are clean. Now what kind of tea do you want? It's never been outside. <laughs> do you have an herbal? I got shy, I got anti-stress, I got night-night, I got belly comfort. <laughs> Oh, you got anti-stress on. Maybe you should have a cup. Maybe you should have a cup of that one, Rick. What do you think? Oh. Maybe we should uh... add it up. Cheers and all like that. Ooh. What's this? Allegro tea. Isn't that the chick from uh, Hitch? Isn't that the chick that uh, Kevin James like in Hitch? Allegro. Oh wow, yeah. But I have a big pot for boiling water. My mom does it like that. And it's like there's like buy two teapots that you put on top of each other, and the bottom is like lots of tea bags. A little bit of that one, and then you could put as much water. I, my headphones weren't on. I didn't hear you say that again. What were you saying? No, we have fun on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. So we were just setting up. There was a little cold open. That camera's not even on. Uh, we'll be right back after the theme song. Scoot doo, blabbity blue, scoot dee, oh yeah! I'm worried to get up from my area. Put on your Because I mask. feel like you will be like, oh. Well, can I let people in on what they might not know, which is you were exposed to corona. I was. And then she tested negative a couple of days later, but here we are. So we did yeah. another test, yeah. which we're waiting a half hour for, and we were going to keep the masks on. But we, look what look what we're doing for look what we do for our Tyso fans. Tyso, I like that. I've never heard you say that. Tyso. Uh, yeah, my sister in law got COVID. Oh, that's and, an interesting and, story. Just vamp, vamp. I gotta finish getting ready. Vamp. Tell, tell it. Oh, you oh, were, she got COVID. Oh, oh. You were whispering first, and then you started. You kept talking into the microphone. Vamp. What am I gonna? Damn. Okay, so she got COVID. That's that's the story. Oh. <laughs> but we spent Christmas Eve together. But nobody else got it. You know what they did get? Huh? I got a, they got a great deal from FanDuel. We'll be right back with a word from our sponsors. Great new sponsor for Tyso this year. It's. FanDuel. 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 And what an opportunity they've given all Tyso listeners. Listen to this. Sign up with FanDuel, use your promo code TYSO, and get your first bet risk-free up to $1,000. And make every moment more this NBA season. Don't forget, 
That's promo code TISO. Download the FanDuel Sports app. And refer a friend for your chance to win a trip to Super Bowl 56 in Los Angeles. Athletic Greens not only is good for you, it legitimately tastes delicious. Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Tyso for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tyso. Dad, I'm not even going to tell you who this sponsor is. I'm not going to let you read any copy because I know you'll know it, and I'll give you a hint. It's one of our favorite sponsors. It's got to be Helix Sleep. There you go. And Helix Sleep is offering up to $200 on any mattress purchase, plus two free pillows. Just visit helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Took it right out of my mouth. How's it looking so far? One line? Yeah, it's weird. I'll put up a picture of it. Um, you don't have COVID, but apparently it says that you are pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if I didn't have six month olds, two of them. That would be really funny if I didn't have two six month old babies. Why? Because if I was actually pregnant right now, I think I would cry. But I said you Not were pregnant. I, oh, like in the last year? Yeah, just a joke. Why would you cry just because of everything you went through? No, because I don't want kids again now. Oh, that's so interesting. You want me to vamp about? Okay, uh, so you, I, so I had two babies. They're six months old, and I, I don't. Oh, really, her uterus tired. Yeah. Oh, you're. You shouldn't. No, Rick. What do I do? I don't know. You, you, you're, There's a lot of jokes here that aren't working right now. <laughs> That's a nice sweater. Thank you. You dropped some ice cubes. Yeah. Are they indoor ice cubes? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, you know what? You're just being healthy. Do you drink floor ice? Do I drink floor ice? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't fuck with floor ice. Do you? Are I, I, no. Why would anyone drink floor ice? Here's the thing about ice. If you're getting it from the fridge, there's other ice in there. Unless you're out of ice. But, I mean, do you have an ice maker? Uh, yeah, his name's Rick Glassman. I just said, I poured, I, poured, I, poured, I poured the spring water into the ice things. Oh, I get it. I see what you're saying. I'm not on you a have hit ice podcast trace. like you. Oh, yeah. If you were, then you'd, you'd have an ice maker in your, in I, your fridge. I mean, I just, it's so hard to talk to, because I want to be talking, but I'm still sitting up here. Yeah. If I own this place, yeah. which, you know, I know you own like nine, uh, there's a lot of things that I would do, including... I've invested wisely. Same. Yeah. But well, you did Magic the Gathering, which I think is awesome. You know what? My favorite kind of I don't of understand ice. it. This is my favorite. Oh, shit. I didn't even turn this on yet. Here's my eyes. Can I have this? No. Is that... Blanket is that is that Dragon Ball Z? Yep, and I every episode I wait for a big moment where I make a blanketed statement and then I knock I'm it I'm nervous off. about holding this. Oh, you make a blanket statement. I make a blanketed statement, knock off the blanket. The fans lose their fucking minds. Do they lose their minds? Do we have a you? So if I open this right now, you'd be mad. What? You'd be mad. I don't want to. It's, it's not giving out. I don't know. Yeah, I'm really not. I'm so sorry. But is it kind of also? You ever watch the stand-up on the TV? No. Okay. First of all, this isn't a blanketed statement. We're both very hyperactive people. Kind of send you a, uh... George, so would you make up for that kind of stuff? Hey. This is a blanketed statement. Mm. You see what I'm doing here? Yeah. How comfortable do you feel about not spilling it? I feel pretty comfortable. Okay. Wait, I, that sounded a little condescending, the way uh. you said that. Well, I was How just... confident do you feel, dumb dumb, about not spilling your tea, dumb dumb fuck? Is that dumb how you've heard fuck, it? yeah. Man, you have been mistreated in your relationships. What? I was asking a literal question of how comfortable do you feel? Because you weren't comfortable holding the icy manipulator. The what manip? Oh, that thing. Yeah. I love that you said the name of that. Like, oh, like I would remember what that was. Thing you was weren't called. that comfortable holding the magic card. Yeah. I'm more comfortable with you holding that magic card than I am of you drinking over this rug that's worth more than the card. 
Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are are, are our levels? Uh, they sound good to me. They sound How okay. How do they right? sound to you? Uh, do that. Okay, we're good. I think we're good. There's a little bit of hissing, but I hear the hissing too. And I don't know what that's from. I, I don't know what that's from. You know, I'm going to test something here. Uh, I'm going to lower. There we go. What did you lower? I had another. I have another audio on in case I choose to later plug this in if we use the phone. Mm. But I forgot to mute it. Mm. Okay. All right. Now I'm really nervous to drink my tea. Well, that's why I asked. Because I feel like I'm going to spill it and I'm going to look like a dick. Because I was like, duh, condescending. I might have to bleep this because I don't know if he'll want this to be out there. And if so, then leave in, guess in the comments what I said. But do you know my friend Eric Griffin? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I know him from you know of him. Yeah. Uh, he just said that uh, he is engaged. Hey. Hi. And his uh, fiance, Rachel, just brought up the idea of me officiating the wedding. <gasps> and he said, and I was like, what? But although he would say like, motherfucker. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> well, you don't know him because, oh, now I'm peeking because of the good news. That's uh, so exciting. Um, I'll tell you something. <clears throat> Uh, it's funny because I have friends that I don't even know if would let me feature for them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have you ever officiated before? Oh, no, of course not. I've officiated weddings. Really? You could drink your tea. Well, there's a tea bag in it. Um, oh, uh, I'm, let me, you, it's, I could probably take it out now, right? Yeah. Do you, can you do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, also, you know, there's something going on. Maybe I'm not used to it. There's something. What's happening? He hello. hello. Okay, we're talking. Hello. Ooh. 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 Hello. Hey. Oh, hey. Welcome to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off Podcast, where we not only give you a tea bag, we take it out. Today, our special guest is Sona Masuzian. Oh, ma ma you ma never get it right. Hi, I'm Rick Glassman, and today's <laughs> guest is Sona. Last name, never been able to pronounce. No, okay. Well, thank you for trying to. I didn't try to. <laughs> I know. I'm being, I'm just being sarcastic. How do you say it? Mofsesian. You say it like you said Smith. Yeah. Mofsesian. Yeah, yeah. Mofsesian. So, Mofsesian. 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 Yeah. You said it once. You said it once. <laughs> I said it once. You right. said it once. So, Mofsesian. 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 Yeah. You know, uh, last week we just we put out the best of uh, 2021, and I struggled. Betty was on the phone, and I. I struggled saying it, and she corrected me, but I don't know if she had it right. You know who else got her hair cut? Sona Mavsufsian. Did yes. I say that right? I don't know, I but I always just call her Sonia. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, yeah. I'll get your tea bag out. Wait, so has anyone ever called you Glass Man? That is my name. No, but instead of Glass Men. It isn't. It's Man. It's Glass Man? M-A-N. Glass Man? Yep. If you take out the G-L, it's Ass Man. Who are you talking to? I'm not even recording. <laughs> are you an ass man? Well, I am a, I am a red, red blooded mammal, aren't I? Hey. Hi. Oh, look, and I got a dish? Right. You know, when I was. I'm sorry, hold on. Okay. Just trying to be I'm not even human. on the fucking thing. <clears throat> I'm trying to have a human. I know. This is this is what happens when I'm in producer okay. mode. And it's really nice to see you. Thank you. But right now I'm focused on how my camera missed me. Oh. So, hey, hey, look at that. <laughs> what was I saying? There was like a dainty cup of tea in front of me when I was like two years old. And it was like a crystal cup of tea. And I grabbed it and I tried to bite the crystal. And then I spilled the tea all over my chest. And I got really bad burns. I still have a scar from it. But I that's, don't know if that's weird. Uh, so uh, let me ask you a question. Is that why your tits are so hot? <laughs> you very good. I, I didn't have tits when I was two. <laughs> okay. I don't know if we're just starting the podcast or this is the end. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but thanks for starting early. What time is it now? 
Uh, it's almost it's almost two. It's it would have been normal time yeah. that I would have started. Oh. But you know, it was better being here than at a Kia, Kia de- dealership. <laughs> if if that were your punchline that you've been working on for years, you would feel so bad. But because it was just a real story, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Which is quite a metaphor yeah. for like when we try and do something and we fail. It's kind of you know expectations. They never they never uh, yeah finish each other's. Uh, there you go. That's coffee you're drinking out of a crystal glass? Yeah. Glass man. Yeah, I have. Uh, I get a lot of comments on how good my coffees look, too. And this they is... They do. Doesn't it? You add a little... Uh, uh, okay. It's my husband. Ball and chain. The old ball and chain. Uh, you might want to turn your phone upside down in case you get Why any- don't I do that? Here, let me respond to him real quick because he's going to, I think he's going to come pick me up because, you know, I don't have my car. I do know. <clears throat> I can get you an Uber if you're not. You know what? Know I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him to get me an Uber. It's my treat. No. So you don't, Sona doesn't have Uber and she dropped her yeah. car off somewhere. So she's like, yeah. I could download it or I could ask Rick to call the Uber and I'd Venmo him. My thoughts were, listen, you come over here, you make me so much money on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's my treat. But one thing that I'm going to... Um, Can I put my foot here? I prefer if you did. Yeah. So uh, I dated a girl, Jackie Tone. Do you, you remember I Jackie, I remember right? Jackie. Her dad does something that she pointed out to me that was so funny. Her dad picks up the bill. Uh-huh. I'm listening but, to you. I'm but not, he, not listening. When he tips, he doesn't put all the cash together. He fans it a little so people could see what he's tipping. Wow. So I don't know if this is a term that's out there, but I now refer to this as uh, fanning the tip. Which is almost oh. giving, but not anonymously. Yeah. So I'm going to fan the tip with you here. Uh-huh. Because you don't drive Uber, so you don't know Uber. But no. I didn't get you an Uber Black. I mean, this is... This. Whatever. Not only did you get me... Sorry. An I didn't Uber mean Select. To, what's a Select? It's, it was $8 more. Below the nice Uber, above the chill Uber. It's Uber X, Uber Select, and then you have the Blacks. Okay. Okay, the, cool. Do they still have Uber Pool? Whatever you want to call them now. Uh, I Probably, but I mean... If you got me an Uber Pool, it would have hurt my feelings, <laughs> I feel like. You know, Uber Pool Not, makes sense for people... Yeah, I get it. ...who need it. Sure. But here's me on my podcast being a guy that's like, you know what? Uh, maybe he's unlikable, but he says it how it is. Yeah. That's disgusting. Who's it, who said you're unlikable? No, I'm... I'm just saying maybe what I'm going to say, some people would be like, no, it's fine. Ride the bus. But, you know. (laughs) Once I tried riding the bus in L.A., have you ever tried it? Not in L.A. Oof. That is, it is hard. I was like, I'm going to go to work. This was in college. I was like, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to use the bus. It took me three hours to do a 45 minute trip. Wow. But also that was, it was a lot of me just being a dumbass. Um, so you're saying not only are you not a good driver, but you're not even a good bus passenger? Yeah. What is that? What's that weakness? What would you call that weakness? <clears throat> um, I think that it's a mixture of confusing L.A. mass transit and a person Being who... A woman. That sound is <laughs> awful. <laughs> terrible sound. <laughs> oh wow what was the other one? Oh, rick this is so nice so every time you come over yeah i at least get a, some content out of it <laughs> you're going hot with the zingers today i uh speaking of mr rogers look who's on my sock oh my god who is that <laughs> 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 who is that it's Mr. Oh, Rogers. My neighbor. You, uh, I don't think it made it on, but earlier uh, you were you were uh, telling us a tale of how you were teaching your kids about divorce today. I wasn't teaching them. Mr. Rogers had an episode about divorce. I watched Mr. Rogers with my boys in the morning, and uh, he had an episode today about divorce. Tell me why, when a man gets divorced, he's still a mister, and it's spelt the same. Single, married, doesn't matter. MR period. Yeah. But when a woman gets divorced, it's Ms., Mrs., Miss, spelt different ways. Forget divorce. Why do we have so many of those? Why do guys all why are guys always Mr. and girls are either Miss, Miss, or Mrs. 
right. doesn't matter about the divorce. It isn't that dumb. Now, if, if this were switched, I could see you arguing, how come men get all these different abbreviated intros? They get Mr. They get Mr. Oh, I couldn't, you know, Wait, whatever. would you want more in abbreviations? No, I'm just saying that like, it's interesting how women want more. But here's an example of they have more. Uh-huh. And they're still not satisfied. Why can't we all just be Ms.? You know what? I think I think we're headed that way. I don't know. I mean, it's like, oh, you're a missus. We're letting everybody know you're married. Well, yeah. The reason is it's it's basically letting it's basically branding a woman to yeah. let them know are they single or married, and if they're single, are they used goods? It's very oh, antiquated. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where a Mister it doesn't matter because his seed is just as good as some other Misters. Yeah. That's where you get the the saying. Let's see. Uh, can you order me an Uber when I'm done? Sorry, I'm just still trying to compose this text, but I get riveted in the things that we're talking about, you know? Yeah. This is... <laughs> you put it down and... <laughs> oh, wow. So, uh, I guess here we are. You're a mom. Here we are. I'm a mom. You're, uh... You're, uh... Not a mom. No. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm neither a mother or a father at the moment. Why are you saying unfortunately? Do you want kids? Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. Well, you can have kids. I mean, we have to ask your husband and Betty, but <laughs> if he doesn't mind if I have kids with Betty, then we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> Wait, do you guys talk about it? Are we getting too personal? I'm curious. Did you talk about it? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a classic guy in this situation where mm -hmm. I go, I'm not ready. But I'm also a classic adult that knows, will you ever be? And I think I yeah. will be. In I a year think you're and a half. ready. Oh, that's a specific time frame. Yeah. Is, does something happen in a year and a half? It's uh, when I get this ankle bracelet off, my ankle monitor. Ah. I don't know. Drugs are hard. Are <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, uh, you asked if it's too personal. And here's something that I don't normally say on the podcast because I guess I go away from it. But I've been wanting to not be so personal on here. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. I haven't not been. Yeah. I don't get very personal on podcasts. I mean, I shared a really personal story about spilling tea on my chest. Mm -hmm. Were you and hot you tits? you said something about hot tits. We can't be serious. Do you think you and I are, is it us? No, I think we could be serious. Because you and I are, are friends in real life. Yeah. So I think that like, you know. I'm saying. But I we're also, we have fun. Oh, we have a great time. Yeah. That's what I was saying before when I made the joke about I always have content. I always have a great time with you. Yeah, we always have a good time. I, in, in real life, too. Sorry, not that this isn't real life. but Yeah, it's, it is. But yeah, it's it's we're doing this. I'm doing this. I never thought of it this way. I'm doing this podcast to, to, to make something. Yeah. And you're coming over. Yeah. Yeah. But we are really, we're actually friends uh, off mic. As when well. I was working at the Warner Brothers lot, and I, we talked about this on the first episode, yeah. but I would come over constantly yeah. to Conan, and you were my lot friend. That I, I loved your visits, too. Yeah. And there were times when I wasn't there, and you'd leave little notes on my desk. And there was a time that I went years later, and you had one of them still. I did. Yeah. Uh, you gave me a card. That had two lovely women in the on the cover of it. That's that's superfluous. Just say and two women. No, two women. Yeah, two lovely women on the top of the card, and you put you, and you put an arrow for one of them, and then you put Rick, and you put an arrow for the, the second right, one. Right, because the two women looked like they were good friends. Yeah. But what was what were we? Get, oh, about the being serious thing. Yeah. <clears throat> it was my understanding after the balcony episode, the first one that we did, yeah. that you don't know me as a serious person, and I understand what you mean, but I never, I didn't think that that was our relationship, but it made sense. Really? Yeah. So I'm gonna be really serious for, for a while right no, now during this. No, don't do that. I don't like it. No, it's okay. Wait, okay, I want to see you be serious. Well, let's do it. Am I being serious as like a serious podcast conversationalist, or am I being serious of? Yeah, it'll be that one. Okay. All right. Sona, what's it, what would you say is one of the main differences that you feel when you're by yourself now that you're a mother than before you were a mother? Oh, that's a good question. There, <clears throat> that's actually, that's a good question. I think it's like a break for a little while. I love my kids, but of course everybody needs some time to themselves. <laughs> 
Were you trying to do a fart noise? I, I, uh, Were you trying to do a fart noise? My, yeah, my hand hit the mic and the other one hit the headphones and I couldn't quite get it in. <laughs> but also I felt like by getting it that half a second sooner than adjusting, it would have been worth it. <laughs> it sounded like an elephant. And I that was trying, you were trying to do a fart noise. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but, but but really, I, I do want to hear. You were boring us about something about getting a break. <laughs> Wait, how long did that last? How long did Serious Rod Podcaster Rick last? No, no, no. But Sony, you have to, you have to. What the fuck? You have to. Why can't you do it? Tell me if you t- tell me how on a scale of one to two. Yeah. Okay. How much to me? Yes. Do you agree or do you not agree with this statement? Yeah. Wait, what's one and what's two? That's why I'm saying yes, yeah, I agree. No, I don't. Two okay. is I agree. Two is I agree. Of course, right? The okay. higher is the why yes. Why don't I just say I agree? That's why I switched it to I agree or I don't. But then you went back to the numbers. <laughs> First base. <laughs> two. Okay. How much do you agree on a scale of one to two? Two being I agree <laughs> and one being <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay. Where where uh, we were being serious, we were seeing, but the situation presented itself. Yeah. And that was just the right choice to make. Even if, if I were like um, uh, a Will Ferrell type or a Steve Carell. No, not a Will Ferrell. Ooh. Steve Carell type who's like, they could turn it off. Yes. They're obviously funny. And, you know, they'll swing the lob at the lobs or the things that they should. But, you know, there's a lot of serious in between. Yeah. That would be one that they would they would swing at. What do you mean? We're, play- would be one- we're playing a serious game. And yeah. here we are being serious. Yeah. And in my head, I was. I wasn't planning on doing that. And okay. then a moment presented itself. I was oh, like, oh, yeah. That's oh, a- yeah. you're saying anybody would do you that. Have to. That's just the right choice. But you asked me a question and I was answering it seriously. And then you did a, it was trying to be a fart noise. But did you, was my question, my, was my answer just not? I knew that we would get back to it. Mm. I knew that we would get back to it. We don't have to. Well, I think we should. And this is kind of, it's a microcosm of what it's like to be a mother. Because as serious as it is, sometimes you have to find your wins. Sometimes you have to find your jokes. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes they shit their pants, you clean it up, and you move forward. But guess what? Yeah. They're going to shit their pants again. That's good. I was, what, were you, what were you thinking? I, I, I said, guess what? I meant to say, guess a number between one and two. Oh, okay. Two. So you do agree. Yeah. <laughs> First base. So what is it like? Tell me the difference when you're alone. And, uh, <laughs> you couldn't even get through the question I'll that tell you time. Something. Uh, Being with you. What happened? It feels like I have a friend over. Well, it feels like yeah. I am your fucking friend. But I have friends over and it doesn't always feel like a friend's over. Oh, why? Because, well, you have comedian friends too. And comedian friends. Here we go. Do your, your stand up. <laughs> What's the deal with comedians? That's not what comedians are like when they're just around. Comedians are like, bro, uh, let me, uh, let me, you know, let me be on here. Try this joke. Uh, like, you don't have you a just seri- making fun of deaf people? No. What the fuck? No. Then what voice was that? Because that sounded that like a- you were doing a deaf voice. Okay, I was not doing a deaf voice. Well, what comedian do you know that has that voice? Who were you impersonating? Duh, duh, duh. That's all comedians. Oh. <laughs> that sound like the... That's comedians. That's my impression of a stand-up comedian. All right, let me hear you do a stand-up joke. Uh... <clears throat> The other day I was uh, walking home mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> the, so uh, the other day I was uh, walking home, right? And uh, then, this, then this guy pulls up in the car in front of me and goes, hey, are you, are you walking hard or hardly walking? You, nowhere in that joke, which actually, I'll be honest, was hysterical. Did you go, <laughs> ding, 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 ding? <laughs> well, that's not me doing stand-up. That's like everybody else doing stand-up, like all your friends and stuff. Oh, that. but you just did you doing stand-up. Mm-hmm. Now do one of my friends doing stand-up. Do Brent Mora doing stand-up. Duh, 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 duh. All right, let's get him on the phone. Oh, let's, yay! Let's see if we can get him on the phone. And... Uh, I'll ask him to do one of his jokes, and we'll and we'll have the audience decide. I miss I miss Brent. I haven't seen him in a really long time. Oh, okay. Now you're gonna turn on the hissing? No, I don't think the hissing will be on if it's plugged into something. Oh. Out of all my friends, Brent answers the phone the least. So little oh. that I don't even call him anymore. Are we gonna leave a message? Sure. So wait, that 
wire that you plugged in does that let him hear me from here and Correct. also okay i used to hold it to here but then <laughs> for mixing up reasons obviously we're in the same track me and the person but sure you'd have to be loud and this is it's just a, convenient yeah now here's a question for you which i know the answer to for most people which is you tell them right away that you're on a podcast yeah but when you tell someone they're on a podcast they become podcast person right but you need to let them know so what i like to do is call them yeah not tell them and either in an organic moment after you get what you need by the way we're on the podcast okay or afterwards tell them and if they're not okay with it yeah you take it out well is california a state where you have to disclose you're recording someone i mean isn't it a felony if you don't well i will it isn't a matter of dis- disclo- or disclosing when you yeah. will okay I can't imagine if if I got I would arrested. never answer another call from you again. <laughs> if what? If you like, you know, recorded me and didn't tell oh, me. Oh, I was saying, imagine if I recorded somebody, but I told him after, but I was arrested. Oh, <laughs> because, <yeah. laughs> no, I would I, never, 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 <clears throat> never, never do that. Oh, Jesus. Oh. We have a new sponsor and it's FanDuel. Ricky, I love sports betting. I can't believe you have FanDuel as a sponsor. I'm going to do what you should do. Sign up for FanDuel, use promo code TISO, and get your first bet up to $1,000 risk-free. Come on, what's a better deal than that? And make every moment more this NBA season. Use promo code TISO. What I love about sports betting is you can get innocuous games. Iowa State versus Tulsa means Ooh. nothing to me. I live in Cleveland. But if I have a little wager on the game, now it's interesting and I have an entertaining night. FanDuel allows me that. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and refer a friend. For your chance to win a trip to Super Bowl 56 at Sci-Fi Stadium in Los Angeles. For two people. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. 21 and over and present in present Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. Referred players must wager $10 or more within 28 days after signing up. Bonus issued as site credit and is non-withdrawable and expires after 7 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. No purchase necessary for the Super Bowl ticket promotion. Super Bowl promotion closes on January 9th, 2022. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP, N-E-X-T-S-T-E-P to 53342 for Arizona, 1-888-797-7777 or visit ccpg.org chat for Connecticut, 1-800-522-4700, Colorado, 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa, 1-800-9-WITH-IT, Indiana, 1-800-GAMBLER, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia, Tennessee, Redline, 1-800-889-9789, Tennessee, or visit www.1800gambler.net, West Virginia. Mom, what are you burning? Sloppy Joe's. Mom gets lost in the kitchen. Funny that you bring that up because cooking is difficult and knowing what to eat is difficult. And I find when I start my morning well, I want to eat well throughout the day. And that's legit. So you've been using athletic greens. I have. It's a powder. You put it in cold water. You drink it. It's not just bearable. It's actually a delicious drink. It contains less than one gram of sugar and no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and it tastes delicious. And it supports better... (laughs) It supports better sleep quality and recovery. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a whole bunch of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine, which cost him $100 a day. This costs you less than $3 a day. Come on, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's recommended by professional athletes all over the country. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Tyso. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tyso. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So if you're a fan of Tyso, you all know that I have a Helix mattress and I love the Helix mattress. Mm -hmm. They sleep so soft. I'm cool. I'm comfortable. No matter what side I sleep on, my side, my back. That's the thing. No matter how you sleep, they have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. They have them if you run hot, they have them if you run cold, and they're great for spinal alignment. So go online and take the two-minute sleep quiz to figure out what mattress is best for you. Take the quiz. <laughs> so if you're looking for a mattress, take the quiz. <laughs> Take the quiz, all right? Order your mattress, and you'll be so happy. Dad, do you know where Helix was awarded number one best overall mattress pick of 2020? Absolutely. GQ Magazine and Wired. That's helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Try it for 100 nights risk-free. That's That's up to $200 off all mattress mattress orders and two two free pillows by visiting (laughs) helixsleep.com slash Tyso. I could use a nice Helix nap right now. (laughs) Could you drink that a little bit louder? 
Oh, we could raise it in post. Oh, never mind. You drank it as loud as you possibly could, actually. That'll be fine. Oh, yeah. He better pick up. I hope he does. It, am I just, can I, are you going to introduce me or can I just be like, hey, friend? What I just did? Yeah. Okay. You can leave a message. But leave a message saying that we're on the podcast and this is what I feel like. Comedians, if you get this in time, call back so we could hear it. You want me to leave a message? I want message? you to do your impression of Brent. Oh, on the thing? Yeah. Well, are you going to... You, oh, he, you know what? You're calling from your number. Yeah. Well, and I'm not why trying is to there no him. voicemail? Because I have horrible cell phone connection here, yeah. I call on FaceTime audio and I was realizing oh. with FaceTime audio, I'll message him and say, hey, Wait, Brent. why can't you call him? Because I have bad cell service. What? Who's your carrier? Uh, I don't want to put him on blast, but their name is uh, uh, Ocean Views. I try to make up, but I couldn't think of something. Verizon. Uh. Or AT and T on podcast with Sona, hmm. which it thought I was saying aroma because you smell so. Does much. your phone uh, autocorrect my name? Yeah. To what? Uh, Sonar. I just said it. And I already forgot aroma, aroma. But I must have spelled something wrong because the second time I did it oh. at work on past podcast with Sona, she has an impression of you, of your stand up. Uh. We want you to do a joke so the hundreds of thousands oh i don't have reception either can decide if it's accurate hundreds of what thousands of people mm. you bring in a big audience I, I doubt that you know what uh i'm reminded as i'm typing horribly huh. by the way i I have no idea. Well, I have a, a very, very bad idea of how to spell diarrhea. So much so that I never get it close enough. And I've realized I probably Googled the word diarrhea <laughs> more than anything else. Wait, doesn't it autocorrect? I don't get it close enough. Let me try oh. now. I don't get it close <clears throat> enough. Wait, can I guess? Because I also have a tro- I have trouble spelling diarrhea. Go ahead. Let's see Why if you can get it close Why is there an enough. H? I think it's D-I-R-R-H-E-A. D I R R H E A? No. No. Let's see if it's even close enough to guess. No, it's saying you're saying die or head. No. D I H R R E A. Nope. Are you close enough? Nope. That is digress or duh treat, which is what you tell a dog if he forgets what he likes to eat. No. What I do find though is Google, mm. I could type in anything and <laughs> knows what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Di uh, R E A H. I said, and I also sp- didn't even type the letters right. I tried to spell it different, but what came out was D I A R R S H. Oh, go, and it knows I tried to spell diarrhea. No, D I A R R H E A. That's what I said the first time. Well, we'll play it back because I did everything. Let's see if that's what she said. D I R H R E E A R H H E A. Diarrhea. Maybe I, I don't know. If, I I don't. Rem, I I think you spelled didn't spell that, but maybe you did. I'm okay. not sure. Um, ooh, Brent texted back. Eating dinner with my family last night before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> or as you would say, oh duh, 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 duh. <laughs> that's only when he does stand up. <clears throat> oh, let me check your test. Let oh me see yeah. If, oh let me shit! See if I just keep going too. Ugh. Was that making you making fun of improv people? Uh, yes, and no, I'm not. You know what? I owe a lot to the. Are we good? Let me um, let me uh, tell you about the test for my impression of a stand-up comedian. Okay. All right. Here are the results of your <clears throat> test as a stand-up comedian. Say. Yeah. So I just checked the test of uh, friend came over. She checked for COVID. Yeah. yeah. Or as I like to call it, shit ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, what's interesting about testing, uh, uh, testing for you, COVID? You, I'm sorry, you call COVID, you shouldn't go anywhere? Uh, uh, hey, miss, do I slap, come into your house and slap the dick out of your mouth when you're working? All right, I'm doing a show. This ain't TV, this is real life. You fucking bitch. You fucking whore, slut bitch. All right? Jesus Christ, I'll tell you something. Uh, you know, the one thing I don't miss about quarantine was fucking bitches in the audience fucking saying stupid shit like fucking sluts. Okay? Fuck me. <laughs> You know what? You'll probably relate to this because the same thing about a COVID test is the same thing about an STD check, which I am positive, you fucking slut whore bitch, have gonorrhea, which is spelled G-I-N-N-R-R-A-H-E-A, gonorrhea. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> no, but seriously, COVID, COVID is, it's like, when somebody says, uh, COVID is the only time, uh, you know, tests like this, man, okay, uh. where you get a test that's negative, is actually positive. Huh. The whole system's flawed. I want my doctor to say, hey, I got good news. It's negative. Well, what's the good news? What's the... I got yeah. bad news. It's positive. Yeah, it's so confusing. And that's because of the pharmaceutical system. Right. And that's where stand-ups uh, get into like... They, they get, that's what they're transitioning into now. Pharmaceuticals, policy, government stuff. Wait, is that true? About what? Is that where they're transitioning? Well, I'm saying that's, that's the craft. Ah. Like if I have a joke about Trump... And I have a joke about, you know, uh, STDs and COVID and positive negative tests. The way I would do it is, yeah, because it's the fucking pharmaceutical companies, right. which, by the way, are literally pouring money. Hey, you're voting. That's great. You know who's picking our president? Fucking Pfizer. Uh. Speaking of our president, I, uh, I'm glad I'm getting more vitamin C now that Trump's out of office because that orange hair fuck was getting me loaded. <laughs> that guy's hair is so bad that he looks like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but you have a negative uh, test oh good yeah which i don't know if is that good news or bad news <laughs> no it's good news yeah so but tell me now that you're a mother yeah okay you're alone we're still going back to, to yeah. this okay. you always got to shit your pants more than once yeah or however it goes uh, shit your pants you get back up you always got to shit your pants you shit your pants once Shame on your shit. Boo! <laughs> it ain't easy, sweetheart, all right? You think you can, I don't go to your house and slap a dick out of your mouth, all right? This is TV, not fucking... Yeah. Uh, you think I'm turning tricks at my house with my children there? You know that line, right? You've heard yes. that. Yes. Well, that's the implication. Is that, is, that, is that really what they say? I don't come to your house and slap the dick out of your mouth? There's a lot of tricks in this game. And, yeah. And, and the way to do that is to insult them it's, i'm saying why because it's an insult but why to does it have to be your house why can't it be like i don't come to your uh place corner. of work it's place yeah. of work oh so you fucked it up no because we're in this the covid world so i figure m much like me you probably work from home oh right 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 but that's a comedian who who is derogatory like that because i think that if you want to suck a dick to make a buck yep hey what do you think i'm doing here At, you know what i'll you could bet on it and if it's so, I advise you go over to FanDuel to do so. We get $1,000 risk-free bet. That's FanDuel.com. Use the promo code TISO. You do it while you're interviewing? I, you know, listen. You, these people, you embed it into the interview? Okay. They're paying me to sell a service. Now, I'm only going to sell a service that I believe in. Okay? Are you still, are you still doing it? Yeah. <clears throat> you don't want to just, like, wait? Till I'm not here? I guess, but as soon as you leave, it might be late. I'll have to fall asleep and I'll get the best night's sleep ever because that's how I have a Helix mattress. Go over to helixsleep.com slash Tyso. <laughs> Take the two-minute survey to get up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. That's helixsleep.com slash Tyso. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a free mattress? Oh, yeah. And it is very good. Is it? Do you have them as a sponsor, Helix? Oh, no. They, it, it's, it's, uh, we had another... Oh, fuck. I forgot what it was. Sure. One of the mattress companies. I was I was worried that um because <clears throat> the first time I did the ad I was like yeah I'll do it I'm not going to say that I've used it yeah. but when they send it if I don't like it I mean they're paying me a good amount of money and that's a big blanket of statement because daddy gets paid okay yeah but if I don't like it I can't do it so I was in this place it please be good and I got to tell you something it's a fantastic fantastic mattress and Can I've been recommending it off the pod and I like a firm mattress. Mm -hmm. And I was having a hard time figuring out what exactly it is that's best for me. I went to helixsleep.com slash Tyso, and I found the perfect mattress for me. And if you use promo code Tyso, you get up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. We'll put up the lower third. Yeah, jeez. We're not going to run that ad. You're really not going to put that in? Nope. Okay. Next time you come on my podcast, I'm going to... I don't ever run ads on your podcast. That's fine. You didn't let me finish my sentence. And I also don't run ads mid mid show. If you take that out, might as well not do the, the entire thing. Fine. Fine. Then I won't. Fine. Well, then we the rest of the podcast we could talk about stuff that I know is not going to come out because this isn't happening. Then start it off. So I'm going to tell you something that's in private. Sometimes my girlfriend complains about the size of my penis because it hurts her. Don't because air this. She's bummed. Well, it hurts her even more when she's bummed. <laughs> <laughs> is that an is that a backdoor bumble thing I've met your girlfriend and I would never disrespect her on this show how is she being how but I would disrespect on her on your show are we on the show we're are live. you airing this all of it that's helixsleep.com god 
Damn. slash Tyso. No. Can I talk about a, uh, a product we had on our podcast that I actually really liked? Could you do it as a stand-up bit? Uh, no, because it's not funny. Well, either is most stand-up. Okay, so... Just do it in the structures, you know, yeah. the, the devices. So, so I'm on this podcast, right? Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Um, hold on. <laughs> in, in, in. <laughs> and one of our sponsors is the Chrysler Pacifica. And I'm like, cool, can, can I give you a trick so how you could mm -hmm. add just little, not punchlines, but Should little... Should I be more myself? Yes, why always. Is, why am I doing... Because you're, uh, like, you're judgmental. Because you're making fun of the, the craft. Oh, I am. Yeah. And I think that's... And I, I don't mean to. I love stand-ups. And I didn't mean <clears> to go dirt, 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 dirt. Like, I wasn't like, you know... I you was didn't. making you fun of you. Yeah, you were. Well, because you're around it, and you uh, you feel like you're one of them without getting it's the exhausting. title. It's exhausting. Yeah. yeah. But, you're, but, you know, it's your career. Stand-up is not my career. Comedy. Com well, yeah. I mean, I work in comedy. Are stand-ups more exhausting than Conan? Who's not a stand-up? Conan is also exhaust. That's the. It's people who are like who the, whose minds work a very specific way. Each other sentences. I thought you were gonna say quickly, but yet I still said each other sentences. So edit that in to show the miss, but or Mister. But go ahead. So um, <clears throat> people whose minds work a very specific way, they hear things and then they think how do i make a joke out of it which is fun for a while and then after a while you're like okay you can stop yeah. now you know absolutely don't you th don't you find it exhausting when you're with your friends who do stand up for a while and it's not me knocking on it cuz I'm, I'm i admire it i'm very much in awe of it cuz i my mind doesn't work that way but it's exhausting yes <clears throat> i agree with you when it's exhausting it depends on the comedian, the, the person, but what they're doing. I love to, in fact, I might even say to be happy, I need to be laughing all the time. Oh. And <clears throat> when something's not funny, that's when it's exhausting. Yeah. And not being funny doesn't mean it's, it's not funny. It could be it's not funny anymore or it's not funny in this moment or I'm not in the mood for it. Do you laugh out loud a lot? I, I don't know yelling? how to... Yeah, maybe it's just the levels. No, it's not. It's my Armenian-ness. I just get loud sometimes. Yeah, I do don't you, know. Do I don't laugh? know what to, how to, what to compare that to. Do you laugh a lot? Like, do you feel like sometimes you laugh so hard you, like, you're out of breath? Uh, I, I, maybe. Just I haven't as much that. as you did when you were younger? I don't think I laugh. I laughed the most when I... <clears throat> When I was younger, because when I was younger, I was going to shows more and we were hanging out with people and we were doing bits all the time and I wanted to be around people and I was staying up late. and Yeah. So I'm not around as much. I think I have the capability to. I do too. I do too. I think I, I remember like sometimes I would laugh so hard I would like like think I was dying because I couldn't breathe. I haven't laughed like that in a while, but I laugh a lot. So... Where is the line between being exhausted by a person or persons <clears throat> versus, oh, they're doing, they're making me feel good? I don't know if there's a line. Is there a line? Well, Conan know. probably makes you laugh a lot, right? Conan does, yeah. But I then mean, he's also exhausting. Well, he's just, he likes bits. He does bits a lot. And there's moments where you're like, okay. So if he were, if he were in perfect tune no, with what you wanted yeah. and was willing to concede to it, where would it be where it's like, ha ah, ha perfect, perfect, not now. Do it. Stop. I have no idea. I think it's too hard to say that, isn't it? Yeah. That's really hard. Are you not doing stand-up shows anymore? I, I started doing shows again a few months ago. Where? Laugh Factory for whatever. You know what? I got to say for whatever reason. Um, Dane Cook was on my podcast. Uh -huh. I started doing stand-up again um, a couple weeks after, coincidentally. I told him he contacted Enrique at the Laugh Factory. Shout out to Enrique. Yeah. That day... He started texting me and asking for my veils. And every week I've put them in. He's given them to me. Given, I've always wanted to get in at a club because I never have. That's amazing. I was really so the laugh has been putting me up. The improv puts me up. Uh, and then just random shows wherever. Still not doing spots at the comedy store. That's yet. very cool. I was gonna say it's very cool of Dane Cook to do that for you. Yeah. I mean, he has a lot of clout. So him saying yeah. to Enrique to, to do that is nice of him. Very nice. Did you send him a basket? Dane or Enrique? Neither, but I'm curious who I should send the basket to. Dane. Should I put anything in it? 
uh, yeah, like a gift basket. What if I did you think I meant an empty basket? Baskets. I don't know if you meant like a nice basket. Oh, no, I meant like a gift basket with some goodies in it. You know what? I might. What sponsors do I have? Oh, Rick. can I send him a mattress? <laughs> oh, Jesus, Rick. <laughs> what should I send him? What do you think I should send him? Well, when I need baskets, I go to a place on Melrose called Fanciful. I just say, hey, can you send a, a gift basket to this person? And I give them a price point and they do it. There's a place that I've gotten some gifts for. Um, uh, uh, Brent said he could do it in 10, so I said a few members call me. There's a place, and I want to see if I can find it. Betty turned me on to it, that I've gotten a few times, and I should do it. I love it. I think it's something elephant. Wait, so Brent responds to you right away, but he doesn't answer your calls. He doesn't answer my calls. He's, he's the guy who doesn't want to talk on the phone. But he doesn't always <clears throat> respond right away. Oh, he doesn't? Okay. I, I, there's no, there was no, there's no like, I bet you Brent won't respond. I mean, I haven't noticed anything about that. I just know for calling. Oh, like okay. I normally don't even call him. Huh. You just text. Yeah. I don't remember what it's called and I want to plug it because it's so great. I, I'll probably put it up here. It's, they do, you could do soaps or chocolates or fruits or vegetables Ooh. or candles. It's stuff that's like, but it's curated very, very well. Yeah. And they're really nice. And I'll send him a basket. You should send him a basket. Okay. So, <clears throat> but we were talking about. Uh, don't you have friends at the store who can help you get in there? Is it just hard? Uh, is this not a place you want? Is this not a you don't want to talk about it right now? No, it's fine. I have I literally have merch that says "Not passed at the comedy store." Ooh. Um, so there was a booking manager, a bo the booking talent booking agent there that just didn't think that I fit in the comedy store well. He mm. has since left. There's a new person there. So yeah, I think so. I just have to go and show my face there and perform and figure that out. Um, Bobby Lee put in a word for me with the other person, uh, but okay. it didn't do anything. Um, so I might ask somebody to help me with that. I, I don't know. Hmm. But it's Do a, you care? <clears throat> Laugh Factory is huge. Improv is huge. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't care. I'm not stressed about it. Uh, I don't take it. I, my feelings aren't hurt. Yeah. But it is an amazing club. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, and I would love to work out there. I so it is it. a goal. I want to, and I believe I will. Uh, I also started out there. I was answering the phones there. I used to get spots there. Hey, cute. Yeah. You were you worked at the comedy store? Yeah. Once a Aww. week, I answering phones so I could do the friends and family stuff. Oh. And then when the guy got fired from there and the Ooh. other guy took over, I, I was no neither friend nor family. When was that? I don't know. Probably like 2000. Well, oh, okay. I used to go there a lot in 2006. I frequented there a lot. Oh, uh, Brent's calling. Yay. Did you tell him I'm here? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, hi, Brent. Hey. Hey, could you hear us? Oh, you hear us, right? Yeah. Brent, it's so Yeah, I could hear you guys. Let's hurry up. I, you know, my uh, ailing family. Oh, uh, my inside, getting ready to eat pizza. <laughs> well, do you think you guys? Oh, hold on. I'm going to go get Sona a bath. Hold on one sec. Oh, my God. That was phlegmy. Wait, what are you doing? Brent, I miss you. I'm in you. Connecticut. Oh, well, yeah, I'm coming back. I was just at a pizza place. Oh, that's had to pick up some pick up some pizza for the fam. How uh, do you think feeding them your ailing family pizza is the thing to do? Yeah. When, do you know what ailing means? I think. No, I'm asking. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> See, Sona, Isn't that like wither away? See, that's, he's not going. Brent, listen to listen to, to Sona's impression of not just you, but stand-up comics. But but I said you. Listen to her impre her impression of what that is. All right. Yes. Do do the joke that he just did in the way you you would do it. Uh, dur, 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 dur. That's what she does. She makes fun of deaf people on my podcast. Oh, Stop my saying that. No, Brent, I was just saying how a lot of you guys, and by you guys, I mean stand-ups, are on a lot. And then after a while, it just sounds like thir, 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 and like fart noises. But I wasn't, I wasn't saying that to be insulting. Oh, you weren't. Let me tell you something, you bitch. One of the things that we do as comics... Oh, my God, I just swore in front of children. Hello. Um, I'm outside pacing around. Uh, yeah, she's not wrong. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 
Oh, hey, Son, I've Brent. been hearing you on, uh, you've been killing it on uh, the Conan podcast. Why would you pronounce it like, like he's Freddy. European? Well, because I feel like he's a stranger to me at this point, since I've never been invited on, and I worked for him for five years. But um, oh, <laughs> he had okay, Barack yeah, Obama on. <laughs> I know black guys. Um, oh man, I'm bombing here on the east. Are you? Uh, uh, you're. Is it cold? Of course, it's freezing. I'm walking in slush right now, uh, and uh, but I fly back tomorrow. Okay, so I'll be back in LA. Is your whole family your there? Kids? Yeah, yeah, it's our last little dinner before I leave. That's nice. Again, uh, my kids are good. They're s- going to be six months old. I mean, I have two kids now. Can you believe that? My God, it's unbelievable. You, Wait, you're killing sorry, me. I was filling my, was my coffee kids. and my my timing's off, but I have a good bit. So, uh, so I want to say what you just said again. Uh, I have two. The, my kids are going to be two months, six months old. That's not what you said. You said I have two. Kids. I have two kids. And they, oh, that's uh, interesting. Because yeah. when you're talking to Brent and me, it sounds like. But yeah, do it again. Do it one more time. Um, I have, yeah, do it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Say it one more time, that, real quick. Yeah, it's crazy. I have two. I have two kids. Oh, that's funny. Because when you're talking to Brent and me, it's, it sounds like you got four kids. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's funny, Sona. Because when you're talking to me and Rick, it seems like you have four kids. <laughs> What'd you say, Rick? You cut out. Yeah. No, I said the same uh, same thing. Oh. Okay. But from my point of view, yeah. It's fantastic. There's a lot of raccoons in this backyard. I just realized. <laughs> <clears throat> Brent, Brent, uh, for for people at home who uh, who who, who uh, unlike Dwayne the Rock Johnson, who aren't too familiar with your comedy, do me a favor. Give me uh, give me one of your best uh, thirty second bits. Go ahead. It won't be thirty seconds. I don't do that. But I'll, I'll give edit you it down. An idea Adam Ray. Of my comedy. This is my comedy. What in the living hell is that about a bada? Duh. That's what Sona was trying to say. And that's what you do. That's sitcom material. Brent, give us, give a, give us a, uh, give us, uh, give us something classic, something you don't mind burning, something that was on one of the old specials. Oh my god. Um. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, do the Uber one. I remember. No, 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 no. That's too long and great. Let me do. <laughs> you said too. Did you say too long and great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the. Uh, uh. We classics. Cl- let me give you the old. Right, uh, you're Brent. You know, hold on. Keep oh. it on. No, I'll keep it on. I'll keep it on brand here. All right, but let me let me uh, set this up real quick. We're gonna make your audience, um, my my little family, and we're gonna see if you could get them to laugh. Go ahead. Okay. So when I was working at the Tonight Show with Conan, uh, not Jay. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> um, I remember Bradley Cooper was on the show. Beautiful looking man. Yeah. And I remember he looked at me, and my job was to walk celebrities to the dressing room. And I remember when I, he was leaving, though, he was so nice. He looked at me with his beautiful eyes and said, have a good night. And I looked at him and just went, night, night. <laughs> night, night. Who says night, night? Wow. You know what I realized? I'm way funnier now. That joke sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made I love them laugh. that joke. I laugh. <clears throat> I love that joke. I remember that one. And I also remember when you did that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was I was there when you did that on Conan too. Oh, <laughs> what? I, I mean it. I oh, was there. Okay, I was. I no, I, I mean it when yeah, you did he it up for. Th- I went, I went was to, the first time to I watch. Ever did Conan. Were you there when he was a uh, guest? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. I came and said hi to you. Obviously, to be honest with you, it was actually really nice of Conan because mm. he let me do that closer on the couch we'll as put opposed up a picture. to just doing it in stand up. Okay, isn't yeah. it nice all the things that he's done for you? <laughs> yeah, he's done so many things for me. Okay, would you relax with your fun podcast, Brent? Who do you th- <laughs> I can't work, Brent? Who do you think will get on uh, Conan Needs a Friend, if at all, first between you and me? Oh, you. You think really? Don't <laughs> yeah. you think? Don't you think you're one successful show away from getting on? Yeah, but you already have. I've seen three episodes of your show coming out. But it has to you be. You have a show that's going to be, be successful. successful. It has to be. It's going to be. It's great. Will you so, know? Have you seen any of it? I haven't. But will you even know if it's successful? He's so on... good in that. Thank but you, but we'll, He's we'll... so good at Rick is so good in it. I'm not kidding. He's going to end up doing a bunch of shit. Oh, I'm excited. I'm really excited yeah, to see it. But great. I'm will, proud of him. Will Amazon Prime even well, tell? You know, like... if, if there's like, if there's like, talk, if there's buzz. Yeah, people I mean, are like, "Whoa, that guy from the podcast who's always on and nobody liked him is that good of an actor?" <laughs> oh they- my god, <laughs> Brent, you kill it! He's got great dramatic moments. He he really kills it. Uh, you can do it. What? We'll cut to a dramatic <clears throat> clip now. Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first hoop, but I learned, didn't I? <laughs> got pretty damn good too, didn't I, Uncle Phil? Yes. Got through my first date without him. I learned how to drive without him. I had fourteen birthdays. He never even sent me a card to hell with him.
You know what, Uncle Phil? I'm gonna get through college without him. I'm gonna get me a great job without him. I'm gonna marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm gonna have me a whole bunch of kids, and I'm a better father than he ever could be. There ain't a damn thing he can teach me about how to love my kids. How come you don't want me, man? And we're back. Yeah. Brent, I have a question. Well, you know, yeah. When you did your Netflix special, did Netflix tell you how many people watched it? Uh, no. Right? No, Isn't they that... They don't say that. That's not cool. So do you know that The Rock watched, found Brent's special? Yes. Po- posted him watching it and followed him? Yes. Where the host is like, what's your name? Kid's like, I don't have a name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he followed you? He followed him. Do you know how much I love The Rock or Dwayne Johnson? I used to watch wrestling all the time. Why did you correct time? it? Like we didn't know which rock you because were talking about. Because he's not The Rock anymore. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, Dwayne Johnson. True. I mean, if you're going to correct something, you should have said Dwayne Johnson. I mean, The Rock. Yeah. Not The Rock. I mean, Dwayne Johnson. I think he's well, still The Rock. Dwayne. He's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. He's, you know, he's not. The no, Rock I was. Never, his, would you say Sean Combs? That. I, I don't know any of that info, no. but uh, what's really great about Netflix, though, is that they, every day somebody hits me up about that special. So, oh, that's and cool. uh, actually, coming in April, I'll be playing the uh, Netflix is a joke festival <gasps> in L.A. Oh my God, so, Brent! I'm even doing that. We're doing a live yeah, well, recording uh, of. Looks like it looks like uh, you guys are doing a fun little <laughs> festival there. <laughs> wow, that's fun. I'll be. Uh, I think actually in April I'll be in the bathroom, so I wasn't able to do it. No, you'll be you'll be uh, having to get fitted for suits for the Emmys, my man. Brent, I uh, I did a physical. Th- I found this new place uh, walking distance from me. Well, not walking distance, not the point. But I found a place where I'm doing this physical therapy, personal training thing, and I got assessed today. And he did some uh, some pictures and videos of me standing shirtless oh. with uh, from different <laughs> angles, and I, and he showed me the before and after. He did some. Uh, he did some manipulation to me, and I did see a difference. But I'll tell you something. I thought of you immediately. I, I know I've, I've seen my body in the past year plus and I, I look like my brother and, and I say that because he's not a, he's not a star. Okay. He's, that's what he's, no. he's supposed to look like a, like a man who's 40. Uh-huh. I looked so, I, I, you know what? I don't even want to say this cause I don't want to insult my brother. Cause I bet you he's got cool tattoos. He looks better than this. I looked so bad that when he was showing me what I looked like, I laughed like, but not laughing funny. <laughs> Laughed because that's how I reacted yeah, yeah. to the depression, and thought <laughs> yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, I have, and I believe Sona. Correct me if I'm wrong on the term here. Huh. A muffin top, <laughs> Brent. It looks so bad. It looks so bad because I've seen that my arms aren't strong and masculine. I look so bad. I'll tell you, I, I, I almost want to put it up. I'd ask him for it, but I'm, I, I won't. It looked like I made it out of clay, but I'm a bad artist. <laughs> Like, that's not what a body looks like. I look so bad. I will not be fitted for suits. I will be fitted for a sweat pant. Really, it's, I look so bad. No, you're just getting closer to looking like Kenny Smith. My you know? mom. Like he played sports, Kenny Smith. but he's a little older. Yes. But he still wears uh, Air Force Ones with a suit. Yeah, yeah. there's muscle that's under okay. there. I want but people to think Charles Barkley. I want people. Oh, well, uh, yeah. No, Actually, no, we're I'm having Charles Barkley on the. Po- I haven't done it yet, but Charles Barkley's coming on in March. Get out! Is that he really? Awesome. Yeah. <gasps> That's amazing. Really? Yeah. That's huge. No shit. Thank you. That's a. Well, he's then been I'm on coming our, over. Oh yeah, me too. Now no, he won't remember me. <laughs> Sona, that's how you feel. You feel because I had this talk with Monica Padman. Do you know who Monica is? Well, that's kind of her point. Yeah, she, I know who Monica, Monica is. Monica uh, works with Dax. Oh, Monica okay. is to Dax as you feel you are to Conan. Okay. Um, but Monica has grew this podcast with Dax, so now she is not the sidekick. She's part of it, right? Oh, cool. But she had this conversation about feeling this way and how Jeff Garland, she saw Jeff Garland weeks after they podcasted together and he didn't recognize her. I am someone they need context for. Like Conan will be like, you remember Sona, and then they'll be like, oh, oh right. right, yeah. But if I'm alone, that's kind of crazy though, Sona, because you, I've just listened to the Kieran episode and the uh, Jim Gaffigan one, and you're very, you're laugh, but on top of that, the the first ten minutes, 
You're the only one that can give it to uh, Conan. Like, it's hilarious. Mm. I told you that when you did mine, but my podcast before. You're, it's perfect dynamic. Why have Check you, out the Lion's Den on uh, yeah. it's like on a, really a dumpster strong. at Starbucks. Why haven't you invited I mean, me back? The way you talk about your children is <laughs> kills me. I mean, it's like stand-up. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Brad, I don't know if you heard, but Sona asked why you didn't invite her back on. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Well, well, because I haven't been home. And also, we, you know, so many people turned us down as guests that uh, we kind of, I kind of lost steam in asking any of our friends. Mm -hmm. I know, Rick, you've been asking to be on too, but, and we want you. I don't know if I've been asking to be on. I, I'm offering oh, to be okay. on. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been um, nice enough to ask. I'm offering to, do it, to be all on. All our other friends, all our other friends said, let's see how it goes. That would be like me oh, asking God. to take you to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you need a ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't so need to get I don't need to get 45 views on YouTube, but you know. Yeah, I know. There's nothing up there. It's a good anyway, Listen, you, uh, you know, you, 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 it's you Gina know, Lions then check it out. I know. I love <laughs> you. you. Got, I uh, love merch. Jason. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh, I have a back. We'll figure it out. Listen, I got to go eat with my family now. All Aww. right, you guys. Love, love you, Brent. You, uh, Hopefully I see you soon. Anybody? I hope so. I well, know. you could you could see Brent at the Irvine Improv this January 7th through the 10th. That's brentmorin.com. Get your tickets. Yep. Is that right. true? That's true. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Doing my new hour. Ooh. Which is actually getting horrible reviews. <laughs> but we're going to figure it out. Well, oh my l goodness. let me know if you want me to do a guest spot or if I'm no longer welcome on your shows. We'll talk. It could kind of be funny about that, though, after the last hour. <laughs> was that at Irvine? <laughs> yeah. I've been back multiple times since. Brent got mad yeah. at me about a set at, that happened at Irvine. Oh, I want to hear right, we'll that about story. Me. Okay. Uh, we're not going to waste Love any more time you. with your stuff. Bye, Brent. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Bye, guys. <clears throat> um, I love Brent. Me too. Uh, but uh, that'll do. So <laughs> I want to hear more about the, the idea of... Also, we'll get back to the mother stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you something. You tell me that story while I'm laying on a Helix mattress and I'll be out for 10 hours. Hey, did but, you snap to go somewhere? Oh, it, no, it put a mustache on oh, me. I'm okay. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Okay. Uh, we also, by the way, if our animator isn't, uh, shout out to Tom Bates, um, we could do them practically. Okay. But uh, this, I, this, this thing of you being from, you know, the, what, your, it's your podcast. It's not only your podcast, but it's your podcast. You're on the podcast. Conan needs a friend. I'm... I would never, I would never even call myself a co-host. I am featured on Conan's podcast. I would say you're a series regular. I am, yeah, but I. Uh, but you're not a lead. I'm not a lead. No, Conan is the lead. Conan is the, you know. Um, I remember Tina Fey saying this about Alec Baldwin. I mean, he could be like acting with. I think she said like a coat rack and would make the coat rack look good that's the same with conan I, it could be anybody and he'd make them look good i'm not being modest i'm being very do serious. i do i do that uh yeah you do actually you put me I'm, at let ease. me rephrase do i say that alec baldwin could make a coat rack look good that's what i meant oh no well can't say it anymore i guess a lot of people are being, making some some off-color jokes uh, about you on Conan Needs a Friend. Oh, what, what off-color jokes? Uh, and is it you? No, no, no. And obviously, if it's not obvious, I was um, I was uh, making a left turn on even acknowledging what the off-color jokes with uh. Conan Needs a Friend are. But uh, let's not even talk about it. I don't like those jokes. You know, I found that I have found I'm not somebody who is, I don't even want to say easily offended. I don't think I get offended. That's good. I'm sure that's not entirely true, but for the most part, especially when other people are saying stuff and doing stuff that I'm not even part of. But I have recently been finding some of my peers, maybe friends, making some jokes huh. um, about uh, different things, I guess, that I, one person I actually unfollowed and a couple people I was, I don't know if I'll even look at them the same. Wow. Yeah. Do you ever feel that way? Do I ever get offended? But it's not offended. It's... You're making light of something, I guess, that's not even funny. Right. You're just, I have been, I don't know, maybe as I get older and I understand intention a little bit more or I question it more, jokes themselves aren't the thing, but jokes are coming out of somebody's point of view. Right. That yeah. make me <clears throat> judge their point of view. Interesting. I get that. 
I totally get that. But I don't think I off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that I've heard recently that made me change my opinion about a person that like as far as what they said. Yeah. So it happened to you. <clears throat> Can you talk about it or you don't want to talk about it? Here's where uh, here's where I was talking about at the beginning. There's some things that I, I don't want to talk about on here. OK. There's some things I don't want to talk about on here. And you know what? That's your right. Can we talk about that really bad set you had at the Irvine Improv with Brent? Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to call it a bad set, I'll say that the audience didn't know what was happening. Okay. Uh, Does that happen to you a lot? Because you have a very specific uh, used type to of to comedy. Not anymore. I cry laughing at your set. Thank you. But yeah, I can, I can see how some people might be confused because it's different. It doesn't happen really anymore because I now understand that if it's not working... It's because they're missing something, mm. which isn't their fault. But I now figure out how to show them what the thing is that they're missing. Ah, um, you honed your craft. I, uh, I'm honing my craft. Good for you. Um, yeah, it, it, the basic of the story is. <clears throat> Ew. Pardon me. I got over being sick a few weeks ago, and I still have a little bit of. I cough a lot. Yeah. I've. We know. <laughs> that one was real flummy, but mm -hmm. it's not, I'm not sick. What were you laughing at? Did you, what were you laughing at in the moment? When you, you farted. Yeah, but to me, it was the timing of, because you said, I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was something and farts, you said, yeah. or shits or whatever. And then Brent said something very immature. Yeah. And as he said that, I was just like making yes. your point so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's... it was both of you said something that it was like a, it was a harmony. Each other sentence. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> There's something about, and I've talked about this before, farting into a microphone that just works. Yeah. It does. I had a set. That was a good fart, too. It was very, Thank like, you. it wasn't gross. It is gross to fart in a microphone. But it was, like, quick. Yeah. It made its point. And it then sounded it, like a fart. It didn't sound yeah. like I shit my pants. <laughs> Which, I would argue, I think would be funnier. No. No. Uh, uh, no. A pants shitting fart? No. That's not fun. That's All right, what was funnier, gross. that fart <clears throat> or this fart? Ew, Rick. <laughs> that was a pants shitting fart, right? That one's not. See, that's not as funny to me. The other one was like this like sharp. It if got to the point. If you think the first fart was funnier, comment Sona is smells. Yeah. If you think the second fart was funnier, write uh, Sona uh Rick should go on Conan's podcast. In fact, oh. if you thought any of them were funny, just comment <laughs> on all of Conan's stuff and mine that uh, I should be a guest. Oh my god! But the set was um, uh, the set was. I, I told this story when Brent and Jason came on my podcast, one of the balcony episodes. So if you want to hear it in detail, uh, don't bother. Who cares? But um, <laughs> but I was doing ten minutes, and uh, I went on stage and I did a a, a joke that I said, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, you've already heard this? Oh. Right, hey. never mind. Just a little throwaway joke that, uh, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a classic little one, little bit I do. I'm moving on. Things are going all right. Um, oh, uh, uh, no. Right. The, and, the guy, and the guy said, no, tell us who's there. And then I oh. go, oh, no, but you've heard it already. Then he said it again. So I, just to kind of end it, and I, I don't mind, you know, showing the behind the scenes of the joke. I go, oh, that's just a joke. There's no really who's there. It's just... Oh, you said who's there? It's just a joke. You explained it. Just because I know that I've been there before. Yeah. By committing to it, it's not making it funnier. It's giving him fodder to keep, you know, challenging me. And I didn't want to be challenged. But okay. No, I, think I thought I heard my phone ring. Oh, no, that was me putting on mustaches on and off. Okay. Um, so so at, I'm about a minute and a half in, and he goes, just tell us who's there. So I made a choice. Um, incidentally, I had also recently broken up with a girlfriend at the time. Uh, I was a little, I was fine, yeah. but it was easy to tap in to being sad. And I projected that into him challenging me and just telling him, just talking about how hard it is to do this kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Oh my God, you are actually crying. Um, no, it's, it, because... <laughs> Rick. Acting. You have tears in your eyes. I was there. I'm getting there. And I'm explaining like he's challenging me and I just got out of this relationship and I'm looking for a moment oh, of just Rick. being able to. 
uh, I'm okay. I was just, I was just like, yeah, but that was thank cool. You. But that's what. I'm, but and it was even better there because I was really getting it, and, and mm-hmm. I was, I wasn't just trying to explain. And I'm crying, and I'm, I'm breaking down. Yeah, explaining how hard this is, and I'm wanting to get a win by trying out some material. And I don't know if you realize you're doing this, but you're fucking bullying me right now. Oh. And he got so uncomfortable. And good for me to make him uncomfortable. I didn't want everybody to be uncomfortable. Oh. However, for, for what I was planning on doing, what I wanted to do was make the situation very uncomfortable so I could then, I don't mean to be explaining stand-up, but, you know, like a left turn. It doesn't have to be with jokes. It could be with emotions. Yeah. So to have this, and I know what I'm doing. I'm doing this. I'm committing to this thing, and then I'm going to turn it. Yeah, you're going to pivot. And I'm going to do it off of him so, so people don't like him. And I'm doing this... And people feel bad for me. And then I, I did it. And then I, I go, you know what? Fuck it. Fine. Knock, knock. And then everybody, 300, 400 people, is so on my side. Uh, this is after a few minutes of just like explaining what bullying is doing to the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all the hot button, you know, people doing this thing and, 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 and what this means and what you think you're doing and, and it's not funny and, and what I'm trying and, and just the language difference and how people are being received and just like all the things that you've heard from like people with the postcards. I am human. You know, like yeah. these, all these things that I've seen. And uh, knock, knock. Who's, who's there? Uh, Amos. Amos who? A mosquito bit me. Hey, you know, that's just, good. It's just a bad whatever thing. And the only thing I could compare it to was, was um, w- I used to love watching Showtime at the Apollo. And when people were booed, it was always funny to me because it was so big and a person came on with like an umbrella hook and like got him off the stage. You know, it was, <laughs> it was that. It was, I'd never been booed. I have been a lot of silence. But the booing, there would have been tomatoes thrown at me no. if I had them. I was... I had never bombed like that. I've never seen anybody bomb like that. I was shocked. Rick. And and then uh and then uh Oh shit. That alarm was going off before. I'm sorry if people are hearing it on the it's something that's gonna be going on for a while somewhere outside somewhere. What is it? I don't know. Should we evacuate? Uh, no, you know, unless an alarm makes you cover your ears, I find it's not for you. Okay. Do you smell that? <laughs> it's like smoke. It's <laughs> no, I was joking. Do you really smell something? I, I thought I did, but it could be my mind. Yeah. Well, I did fart into the microphone a whole bunch. <laughs> um, have I let you talk? <laughs> no, but I'm fascinated with this uh, story. So, uh, God, bombing must feel awful. Or are you just sort of like, ah, I, I, I part I, of it. I felt that, and it's not what the medium called for in the moment, which is stand up, but I felt. More importantly than getting laughs, I gave one hell of a performance. Uh. You know, I they believed everything, and I believed it. Like, I was so able to get there, and I'm just fucking around, and I'm working out, and I, I it was obvious, oh, and they were probably, and I say this, maybe I realized and forgot, oh, he manipulated us. We were feeling he was bullied, and he was being vulnerable, and now he did this thing, and for whatever reason, it didn't work. Mm. The structure uh, was missing something. Whatever it needed, I, I'm sure we could figure out and play with. But the point is, if if this were something that I were editing, it's easy. You figure it out or you title it, you know, you know, fake breakdown so people are in on it. They yeah. weren't in on it, so they felt I was bullying them. Ah. But it was so good. And it was like, I felt like good for me. Now, obviously, I wanted it to work and it should have worked. And if I could do it again and make it work, I would. Yeah. But like, I had everything I needed, right? What I didn't, and then Michael Linochi, a comic, went up after me and actually had to be like, whoa, 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 everybody calm down. It was like intense. And what I didn't really consider was that I'm going on as a guest at Brent's show. Yeah. And it made Brent, according to Brent and or the improv at the time, Brent felt like, at least, I should say, because he said it, that it made him look bad. Uh. Um, if Since that's true, oh, that sucks that I did that yeah. as a guest. I didn't mean to. I didn't even realize I did it. Yeah. Brent was in the bathroom during my set, oh. didn't hear anything. So after the set, he said, how did it go? I go, I had never. <laughs> you know, that oh, was, man. And he's laughing because he's seen me try but it wasn't until the next day, next day that he found out after and talked to me 
So he was really upset with me. Oh. And uh, so since then, I have not done anything with him. Wow. Um, it's not a punishment. It's a combination of there was a while where Brent was resentful of me. And then after that, I think it was more just logistical. He's on the road. I'm not going on the road with him. I'm sure if I asked to to sincerely open for him, he'd say fine. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure, but I'd imagine. But uh, yeah, it, it was a... Uh, it was a thing where I now kind of will have a the more awareness of there's a difference between me going on a show that is just eight people performing versus me being a guest and where I, I maybe oh. can't take the types of swings. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but more than that, I think I'm now at the place, and I've done this when people have asked me to, to do stuff on their shows, uh, where I say I do stuff a little weird um, and... Are you okay with me taking chances? Okay. And uh, I feel like by just setting the boundary. I was going to say that probably is enough to just yeah. like. I've also, that hasn't happened since. I like, I understand a little bit more. This was pre-autism diagnosis. And I say that more of a, when I got the diagnosis is when I started to become more self-aware. Okay. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. It's good. It's but, good that you found that out about yourself. Also, and I have a feeling this is going to be a topic of conversation if I do interviews from the show, that's not an autism thing. It's just the aut- learning about the autism forced me to discover so many people are just not aware of themselves. No, they're not. A lot of people don't want to look inward. They don't want to like, you know, learn about themselves. Do they not want to or they don't know to? Uh, I think it's both. I think it's really hard to take a look at yourself and just kind of like analyze things. It's. It's do hard. you do it? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Could you give an example? <clears throat> um, I think work and working with Conan has made me do that a lot. A lot of things that I uh, know about myself. Like, you know, um, I'm trying to think of something negative. <laughs> <laughs> So what are some of your bad qualities on an interview? <laughs> Try to think about a bad quality about myself. No, I think that there's a... <clears throat> I mean, this podcast Actually, is no. going to be alarms and throat clears. <clears throat> and I know, farts. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I always clear my throat. Actually, this is one. Okay, so being a mom has taught me a lot. One of the things is... Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> does it sound like an opening? What, does it? I don't know. Being One a mom of, is... Uh, it has taught me a lot. One of the things I've noticed, and this is uh, this was a big one for me, is I put a big expectation of... like I really raised the standards for myself of what I should and shouldn't do. And I never meet those standards. Like I, I think... I don't know if a lot of women do this when they're new mothers, but like you... You're like, I'm going to do this. And What's then, this? Do you have a thing? As in like, uh, you're going to do everything right. And what? like my one of my kids uh, has um, all these like allergies and skin issues. And I'm like, do I reintroduce regular formula? Do I reintroduce my breast milk? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know if it's it's making it worse. I don't know if it's making it better. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so uh, I'm just kind of winging it, which is what a lot of people do as mothers and and fathers and whatever. So, but every time he's not better or if he's having a reaction, I blame myself for it, you know, instead of being like, he has a reaction and uh, that's just going to happen sometimes. Anyway, so um, I think I put these like impossible standards on myself and then I put them on other people. I put them on my my husband. I put them on my like, you know, my my parents. I put them on his parents who who come and help us out a lot. And like, it's just not fair. So I'm just learning how to chill out with that a little bit and just kind of, you know, be a little bit more easygoing because I am an easygoing person. But being a mom is just change that now i'm like i think that's very nice to talk about like we said even before but it's the expectations of things yes i I think it's great advice and great uh acknowledgement and uh you know something to grow on however i don't think that's at least uh, enough of self-awareness and how you're being received an example of like... What do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Well, the one example I gave, and I could give a, a ton, is I didn't realize that by me taking a risk, uh, I'm also 
gambling with somebody else's money. Oh. And I, I, you know, I, I'm not assessing the risk properly, and I'm not realizing how the, how my behavior is making other people feel. And I don't mean the audience because that I was aware of. I, my friends, the people who, right. who who are associated with me. That's just one specific example. But and you said it's hard to look in and like to find this st- th- the thing. And I'm yeah. wondering if since you said you do like what what could that be? Like I, I don't look at you as somebody who lacks self awareness. Right. I don't think I do, but I can't really like that was the only thing I could think of was, you know, uh, expect setting expectations for myself and other people. I think that there's things that you expect from other people. And where does that come from? And is that coming Mm. from a place that's realistic and fair? Yeah. And so why are you knocking my self-awareness right now? You're looking for a better example. You know, here's a moment. Here's a place where you are uh, unaware. Oh, okay. I, All right. I am actually saying that huh. you, uh, you are m- more aware. So your your example of it would be like me saying my my body is so bad. I'm so out of shape, and you being like. I hear what you're saying and I understand that like, you know, we all have our insecurities and our body and what we want from ourselves, but you don't have a, your body's good. And, and you're like, why are you knocking my, uh, my body shame? Um, I didn't, I didn't hear it that way. Huh. You are to Conan. Oh God. What I am wanting more of to be to me. Okay. You see the things in him that he either sees and doesn't care, or as I believe, understanding how this stuff works and that he's a human, he doesn't see or prioritize. You probably notice when people roll their eyes before he does, if they even roll their eyes around him because right. he's Conan. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess I do kind of. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I don't know. Does it make sense? At least the role that you play with me is you always call me out. I do call you out. I think maybe that's just who I am. That's what I'm but saying. But only with people I'm very comfortable with. But your ability to call them out? Yeah. Uh, you made a joke when we were texting. I, I, I asked if you want coffee or tea, and you said, tee me up. Uh, I, I, I'll tee it up. And then yeah. I said, I'll knock it down. Yeah. And then you wrote, oh, no. Do you want to take a minute and think about what you did there? <laughs> and it was like, like you play the sidekick but the alpha you know okay that's cool which is like what i think the internal self-awareness would be like the self-awareness would be the sidekick let me take control but have your sidekick be like hey rick you know people are rolling their eyes Uh uh-huh you know what i mean yeah so to me i just feel like that's why i mean i'm sure there's other reasons but at least one of the reasons why you're funny is because oh, you see nice. that stuff. Oh, that's very nice. I don't, uh, I never thought of that. I think that I just uh, call it like I see it. L- call it like what? Like I see it. And that's the way, the way you see it. Uh, you see it in a way. You and Conan are, you know, he's obviously this alpha, you know, energy. Yeah, he is. That, and he plays self deprecating all the time, but it's very much, you, you, you never submit to him. No, ever, never. And I don't think that's just for the comedy. I think that's because that's just the life. energies. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Monica, Rick. No, Dax Shepard's oh. podcast. I do know who she is. I was. I. I. I don't think I knew her last name. Padman. Yeah. Okay. Padman. Yeah. Padman. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't much. Do you really not? Much? I listen. I used to listen to Armchair Expert all the time, and. For for no reason other than I just don't listen to podcasts much anymore. I yeah. don't. I, every now and then I'll listen to one depending on the guest. Sometimes I listen to, incidentally, I brought him up, Eric Griffin's podcast. Uh huh. Every now and then Brent's because when I open YouTube, it suggests it. And I'll usually watch the first few minutes because it feels like I'm hanging out. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and I listen to yours sometimes. That's nice. Um, But no, not really. I, you know what? It, I'm not it, driving it, anymore. Uh, that's what I was going to say. I'm not going anywhere. And if I do, it's a true crime podcast. No offense to you because you have a podcast and I'm talking about how I don't listen to them. When people tell me, peers and friends tell me about podcast episodes, I don't believe them that they watched mine or listened. Uh And I always feel like, oh, you must have seen a clip on Instagram. I see clips on Instagram and I really enjoy those. It's it's so hard to believe. And I don't mean to, I, I mean, I'm grateful that people listen and watch this, but like, who's watching this? 
What do you mean who's watching this? Because I don't watch and listen much. No. It feels weird to think. Like when you say no offense, I'm like, of course not. Why would you listen to this? No, but if you think about it, you think about it. There are hundreds of millions of people in this country that have so many different interests. Around the world. Well, there's more around the world. There's more people. You sell a lot of hats to Australia, by the way. Do you really? A lot. I have cousins in Australia. Small world. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I think that there's there's an audience for everything. And I think that's what's so cool. Marshall Rug Gallery. Carpet. Hardwood. And we're back. What's it like being on Conan's podcast when somebody comes on, like Monica, for example, her Matt, when Matt Damon, who she's obsessed with, gets uh-huh. to come on, it's like, whoa, for her. Is there somebody that, that was like that for you? And also, because you now experienced, how professional are you about it? I'm very professional regardless, just in general. Were you there with Obama? Not, not, not Barack. Which Obama were you there with? Michelle, Mich- both times. Okay. Yeah, that was amazing. That was really cool. I, uh, I, that one was one of those w- ones where I was like, am I here? Is this real? Like, am I really doing? Cause I also just read her book. So she like, sure. I, you know, when you, yeah, I read, yeah, read books. <laughs> Is that someone who doesn't read books or a stand up? Uh, it's a stand up who doesn't read books. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I, that one was a big one. I also am a big fan of the Lakers. So, you know, Shaq came on and that was a big cool. deal for me. Um, Quentin Tarantino was on recently, and I, I feel like because of his movies, he's kind of larger than life, almost. It's funny to, to tell us why. <laughs> Is it like Shaq because of basketball? Yeah. It's like, I didn't think you meant because of Epson printer ink. Oh. Is that... Uh, Ted Danson was a big one for me because I binged Cheers not too long ago, and that was fun. I mean, there's there's a lot of times where I'm in a room with people or, you know... Those Shaq and Ted Danson were both Zooms, but when I'm in a room with people, there's moments where I'm like, "What the fuck am I doing?" Are Zooms good? Do you get a good podcast on Zoom? I hate Zooms. How does Conan feel? Um, No, Conan always prefers in person. But there's times when you can get just get someone uh, only on Zoom, and that's especially you know. Do you like it though? I mean, no. Who likes Zoom? Why do it then? Because you have to release a podcast, especially during a pandemic. It was safer for everybody to just be in their own spaces. I did the balcony stuff because otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Is that true? I did a few Zooms and it's hard enough to connect to somebody. You had me on a balcony. Twice. Yeah. You cut my hair last time. (laughs) Wow, beautiful, beautiful hair. (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? Beautiful. Oh <laughs> I'm god. just cutting some shit, man. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's Beautiful. so much. Beautiful. <laughs> and when people are on Zoom, I am I am not there with them. No, it's so di- the energy is totally different. Totally different. I mean, there's moments when that's all you can do, and that's just how it is. And that's fine, but uh, you know, I, nowadays, I don't think I'll do. It. I've turned down podcasts both as guests and people on who I've wanted because I just it's not worth putting it out. I don't know. If, I think I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. It's not me. It's the it's you too. You were even saying it. It's a bad product. It's bad product, but it also it's better to me than no product. Or you find a different guest. Yeah, but at that time, there was nobody who was willing to like, sure. come in studio. That's why it was groundbreaking that what I did with the Balcony series. It's nuts how we figured out. Groundbreaking. But now, people are still doing it. That, I know. I think that, well, yeah, I mean, there's people, I get it. There's people who are still worried and that they should be. But, I, think you know. it's la- I think it's just, we've decided, oh, we could do Zoom. So it's easier. I know, but don't you think there's going to be a point where people are going to be like, wasn't it better when we were in person? Yeah, I mean, look at on a much bigger scale when people are phoning into Kimmel or whatever. Yeah. It's like I, I, as an audience who's liking these shows, don't care about it, don't want to watch. I saw Steph Curry with Kimmel. Yeah. And I'm like, I, you know, I don't care. I was having this conversation recently with someone about like how the world is going to become more virtual. Mm -hmm. And how schools and like, you know, working and all that stuff is going to become more virtual. And I was like, 
I don't know how enthusiastic people are going to be to just be completely virtual about things, like yeah. especially with school, like college and school. I will and say, high school. I will say that some things you don't need to be enthusiastic to do, like some things you virtual meetings where oh, it's yeah. just about the data and information. Right. But I will say, and shout out to Decentraland. I have a couple of uh, plots of uh, land. So um, where? Uh, Decentraland. It is a virtual world. It was the first one that that came out. I, I got back into it uh, in crypto world in 2017. Uh, okay. Got a few plots. Uh, hey. Their first NFT. And uh, in 2017. Yeah. Good and, for you. I don't you. understand any of that. We don't need to get into it. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk not. about it. Let's we we always talk about maybe talking about it but you buy you buy real real estate i buy virtual real estate yeah I, okay but what i'm getting at is i do see a world you've heard at least of the metaverse and what facebook yes. is rebranding into and all these different places yeah sandbox etc where have you seen ready player one yeah that is a th that is realistic of yeah. like right now when you're sitting in zoom and the lighting is bad and there's a, a bit of a delay and you can't you know Oh no! Go, go ahead. You what, what? Oh yeah, yeah. That stuff. But I do believe it will get to a point to where you could have multiple people in a room where it it it'll work. But isn't it human nature to want to be around each other? Yes. Near one another. What I'm getting at is Zoom doesn't feel like you're around them. I do believe, for better or worse, and it's not going to be the same. Yeah. But there will be a time where you will feel like. Uh, you are around these people. I hope I'm dead. Unrelated? <laughs> are you just having the worst time? No, I'm just so <laughs> nervous kidding. about that yeah. like future. That makes me a little worried. I, you know, I hope it's not for a while. Well, okay. I like hugging you. I like feeling your flesh on my flesh. I'm scared to hug you right now, and I would hug you into Central Land. You're scared to hug me because of this specific moment in time. It's not going anywhere, babe. What are you talking? What's not going anywhere? This this is not changing. The pandemic's not this going This is the away? world. You don't know that. Of course I don't know that. Yeah. But, you know, you're oh, the, you're going to, you know, after 9/11. Yeah. The in 2000 the 2001 one, I mean. Oh, okay. Air travel changed. Yeah. And it's always, oh, we didn't think to have this kind of security. Now we will. This will always be like this. It got extreme first. Yeah. Because I remember I traveled immediately after 9-11. I Bragging. went international. I did. I'm a traveler. No, I went uh, I went to London. I studied abroad there. And I remember. How are your arms? That's good. Wait, studied abroad? That not the joke? What's her name? Oh, oh no. It's, I just flew into London and I uh, studied abroad. And boy, is my arm tired. What are you doing? Are you fingering her? Nervously handing her tea. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do what I do best and yeah. interrupt even me at this point. Uh. So I just got a laugh from you. Yeah. Right? Great. When you get a laugh, the, the energy in the room is a certain way and the chemicals in your body are a certain way where right. it's easier to continue. That's riding a wave. Yeah. Right? But at a certain point, it becomes exhausting, which, you know, might already be. But it is hard to know, you know, the arms are tight. I could have done another joke or, you know, like who knows? Yeah. But there's a certain time where you got to like, no, you go, you know, stop, you go. Yeah. That's a weakness of mine. You, you mean like interrupting someone? I don't mind being jumping, interrupted. So jumping on someone else's comment. No. Saying I'm say, something while saying, someone else is say, speaking. Each other. It yes. bugs you. No, what I'm saying is I love to make jokes like that. And you laughed. Yeah. But I'm now thinking like, all right, but don't do too much. Really? Not because of you, but because of like, that's what you got to have to learn how to not be so fucking exhausting. Oh, you know what I, I mean? did I do that to you? I did that to you. You did what to me? Maybe like you I, about I, it? I, yeah. Because we talked about this before. I just remembered. I would I argue that I have, I, I'll find out quicker with you because you'll say, you'll tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you should just do what you're going to do. And if it gets annoying, I'll be like, Rick, I can't anymore. I can't anymore. It's over. I've gotten older. I'm more worried about how people receive me. And with that, you lose a little bit of the special. Shouldn't you care less about no. how people receive you? I got a great answer for this. Yeah. I shouldn't shit. I don't want to care less about how other people feel. And if the way people receive me makes them feel a negative way, I don't want to care less. Oh. I, through negligence, never thought about it before. 
So now that I'm I'm thinking about it, and I've been thinking about it for six years, yeah, as a 37 year old, I uh, yeah, I care. Okay. But I miss it. <laughs> I miss the nonstop jokes. Yeah. What were we just talking about, though? Fingering your Fingering. girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, London about yes. flights. I flew right afterwards. My family had to drop me off a mile away from LAX. It was only ticketed passengers allowed within a mile wow. of LAX. And then you go just to walk into the airport. There was you a walked shuttle. a mile? No, there was a shuttle that would pick you up from a specific parking lot that was totally offsite. Shuttle you in and you had to show your ticket or you had to show. You still have to do that. Yeah. Well, you always had to do that. No, no, I mean, like, now you can, like, someone can drop you off at the airport at, like, the terminal and walk you into the terminal and go to a specific point. And then after that, it's ticketed. But what I'm saying is things always go extreme yeah. and then they eventually just, like... But that was quarantine. That was the extreme of quarantine. Yeah. They've now come to the point to where I'm sure things are going to get better. Of course they are. But... I, I do believe that masks will always be a thing like they are in Japan. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that there's going to be a point when masks are not mandatory. Like when you go grocery shopping, they're eventually going to be like, all right, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. I'm worried if I'm going to be someone that's going to always want to wear it. There's nothing wrong with that. Why is that bad? You know, unlike my jokes, masks could be exhausting. You know? To who? Whom? My friend whom hates wearing them. Mm. And I, it's, it's not the wearing it that's exhausting. It's the, I forgot it, or is this dirty? Or if it's a reusable one, it's like a cloth, which side am I supposed to use? And my glasses are foggy. My arms are tired, and I don't want it. Yeah. Well, why don't you just get disposable masks, and then you never have to worry about wasteful. that. Wasteful. It is wasteful. It is. But I, you know, there, you're right. There are cultures that have been wearing masks for a really long time. And they do it not as a courtesy, not just as a courtesy, like they do it as a courtesy for other people. If they're sick, they don't want to get other people sick. I think it's nice. They also themselves want to protect themselves from, you know, germs. But there's lots of different kind of masks. I would argue, in fact, I will, that a ninja wears a mask not for the other person, but for themselves. Well, it's part of their uh, to hide. Right. Or and I'm sorry if this is racist, but um, our ninjas japanese or are they japanese chinese are they chinese are they korean i thought they were japanese yeah they're japanese right i think so yeah because the japanese wears masks for so many different things yeah they wear it for for diseases they wear it to hide when they're in battle okay so so i mean just think of it that way and and i think maybe it's good because before if you wore a mask to go somewhere people would be like why are you wearing why are you wearing a mask? And now they'll be like, "Oh, you're you're just worried." I have noticed that my OCD has been more accepted by people. Oh, for sure. Like when I say, "Will you wash your hands?" which I always said, people are like, "Yeah, I, I, I was I would love to wash my hands." Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you were like really nervous about, you know, me wearing a mask and, you know, d doing all the things that I had to do before we started recording, I was like, "Of course. It's yeah. totally fine." Isn't that nice? Isn't it nice now when people are like, can you please just, you know, wash your hands or... I guess that would be an example for silver lining. <laughs> I think so. I think there's... I don't know. I do think it's nice that more people wash their hands. Yes. Can you imagine, Can you believe yes. how many people didn't wash their hands before? And, and let me tell you something else that I've always known. How people don't know how to wash their hands. Yeah. You know what? I don't know if I should be saying that. Uh, I'm going to say it. Okay. I'm going to call my mom out. Oh. I'm gonna are you sure you want to do this? No. Okay. But I don't know. You know what? Maybe it was just a one-time thing. <clears throat> it was just a one-time thing. You know, we've all, I will say this. We've all done it. Okay. We've all done this. So I think it's okay. I'm at home for the holidays. Arms are tired. <laughs> Sitting on the couch. And uh, my mom, as she does, as we do, uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, in the middle of anything, just at any moment. And my mom, you'll always know my mom has to go to the bathroom because she'll say, uh-oh, four cute. seconds before she gets there. Cute. That's so uh, cute. And she'll like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> it's immediately. Like a baby who just realized that not supposed to shit them, oh, their pants. Oh, that's so cute. She goes to the bathroom, and it's nearby. And I know it's nearby. I say this because you could hear things. Um, 
And uh, and this is a bathroom where the door doesn't close all the way. It like closes, but it then opens a little. Uh-huh. So my cat kept opening it. Oh. And my mom would let him in, but close the door. And then the cat would open it to leave. And uh, so I hear, just come or stay. <laughs> stay or leave. <laughs> right? Which, you know, we all do. We all do. I just happen to be cl- big close. I'm hearing my mom sharding, talking to the cat. She's right there, you know? And uh, and I take stock of this stuff. But, but uh, my mom flushes and then leaves the bathroom. Mm. And what I noticed, the, the flush to door opening time was a little quick. It was too quick. From flush to door open, there wasn't enough time for a hand wash. Do we think the hand wash was really short or there was none at all? What's the difference? Um, at least... Something happened. Okay, something happened. Something happened. Okay. If you're worried about breaking your ankle or t- spraining your ankle, right, while you're playing basketball, wearing yeah. some nice basketball shoes. Yeah. Did you? Did he leave the laces open, or did he just tuck them under his heel? Uh, okay, sure, he tucked them under his heel, but we're not getting ankle support here. We're not. Okay. I see what you're saying. I mean, come on, I'm so good at analogies. You were. That was a good one. I did always you, say I'm the Michael Jordan of basketball. Did you call? Whoa. Uh, did you call your mom out? I'm not going to call it calling her out. What I'm doing now is calling her out. What I will say is I made no assumptions. So my question was, hey, Ma, Ma, yeah, Ma, did you wash your hands before or after the flush? Because what if for whatever reason, mom white is wiping and then, um, she doesn't want to touch the handle because she got a little shit on her hand. Yeah. So she turned on the sink. She washed, you know what I'm saying? Maybe doubtful. Yeah. But listen. But that to me isn't much better. Once you wash your hands, the handle to the toilet is off limits. There's so many options. Did she use the, her shoe? Did she use toilet paper to do right. it? You know what I mean? Okay. When I go to a bathroom, uh, I uh, like a public bathroom, I take the paper towel in case this, if it's one of these we have to touch. Yeah. I'll have one swoop come out so there's a little paper. I'll wash my hands and then I'll, I'll take the paper to do the rest of the paper towel dry my hands quickly, and then use that to turn off the sink. Okay. Right? So you don't know. Yeah. Before I assume mom didn't wash her hands long enough, I'm going to, let me get some information. Did you wash? And she said, I washed. She said she washed after the flush. Okay. My mom is a sensitive woman. She's a beautiful, kind woman, but you never know where you could say stuff. But I need to know what's going on here. You did, did you need to know? I needed to know. Because you didn't want to touch her if. My mom it, is the woman, and it's such an antiquated truth, but it is. My mom's the person who empties the dishwasher. My mom's the one who's touching the forks and the cups before it touches my food and my lips. Yeah. I want to know if if she washed her hands after she flushed the toilet. Yeah. How how long did she let the soap emulsify? Yeah. Okay. And she goes after. I go, mom, you didn't wash your hands then. Did we get the webs? Did we get the webs? Did we get the thumbs? Did we get the tips? And, (laughs) And even if so, this... My mom, <laughs> let me go away from my mom. People yeah. think soap is magic juice. Yeah. And all you do is you, you, you put it on and you go like this. It's not magic juice. It's not. Even hand sanitizer, you have to leave on and rub in and let it work. Yeah. And that kills germs. It doesn't get rid of all the dirt. Mm-uh. Or should I say, and I'm going to say it, the poop. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So she goes, I wash my hands. And, and, and I go, you couldn't have. It, it, you didn't do it long enough. She's like, I did it long enough. And I'm telling you something, and I was being graceful here. I said it was five seconds from flush to door open. She, now he's, she's like, I washed my hands. Do you want to see? Do you want to see? And she was going to show me that. I guess her, I guess part of that time being saved was she didn't dry them. They must still be a little wet. And I'm oh. like, I didn't ask if you wet your hands. Uh-huh. I don't care if you wet your hands and yeah. spread the poop in the wet. If you take a bunch of shit and hose it down, now you just have sh- wet shit all over the place. <laughs> you didn't clean it off, mom. And she's like, I'll go do it again. And I'm like, I'll go wash my hands again. I mean, I say, you mean you'll go wash your hands? Because <laughs> you didn't do it the first time. Rick. She's touching my forks and my cups. Can I say something? Yes. If this is her post poop ritual, could you find a way to f- the third one be a pee post poop process? Post poop Here, thank process. You. Yes. You probably have already been eating her poop. No shit. Excuse me. Tons yeah. of shit. <laughs> of course. And I'm realizing, and this isn't my mom. This is the world. Yeah. This is why I am this way. Okay. Yeah. Well, now you're in your own space and you can. But when I'm home and I hear, I literally heard my mom sharding. Yeah. Okay. And then flush, door open. Oh, hold on a second here. Yeah. She's going to keep doing it. So what do we do when we go home? Do we not eat the food? Well, here's what I do. 
Here's so sometimes when we get, um, we're always getting delivery. Okay. Okay. And my mom, who's so generous and helpful and lovely and wonderful and an amazing person, will take the plates and the forks and the napkins and get them ready. I always get my own plate. You do now or you always did before? I do now. I have for years. Okay. But then you said she empties the dishwasher. I have allowed myself to believe that enough time has passed that the shit is kind of, some of it is kind of like walked off the plate. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's not right away. Like, like if you were to drink from somebody's cup who you didn't want to, you probably wouldn't do it. But like, oh, it's, it's been, a, it's, it was there from a day ago. Yeah. I don't know. That's not a great example because now I feel like it's been festering. But yeah, I, I'm feeling mom's going to watch this and, Listen, hey, you know she what? She supports you, and you sh- she sounds like a lovely woman. And you know what? Everybody poops. Everybody poops. And that's, now here's where we're coming from. It's shocking how few people, even now, but pre-COVID, understood how to wash their hands. Well, it's because people, I think people, I don't know how this happened, but people thought a simple like, blip, 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 I know. Blip, blip. I'm really worried about putting this out there. Why? Because my mom is is so not a dirty, gross person by any means, but that makes it no, sound. No, but yeah, I also think, well, like you did get really into the imagery, into the sounds with like the sharding and stuff, but I think a lot of people who are watching this are probably thinking, oh, I don't wash my hands that much after I poop. I'm home. Like, who cares? Yeah. There's people who are doing that right now. I'll, I'll tell you something. I wash my hands before I pee and not after. Really? Why? Because my dick. Yeah. My penis. Yeah. Better. Is clean. And I keep it clean because whenever I touch it, you know, when I was single and girls were coming over and jerking me off and sucking my cock, I'd fuck them in the pussy, the ass, titty fucks coming all over them. Yeah. I would tell them to wash their hands first. That's not true. Yeah, it is. Whenever somebody comes into my house, I ask them to wash my hands. Wash your so hands. I was actually thinking hands. I was making a joke. Yeah. But no, yeah. You ask the women you used to bring home to like wash their hands? Everybody, yeah. If you're going to come into my place, wash your hands. Okay. Always. Okay. Why? Why? How are you so certain that your dick is always clean? Every time I shower, I clean it. Yeah, but it's been a while since you did that. And then it's in since your pants what? since you washed it. Right. It's been in your pants. There's That's moisture buildup. You're right. You're right. But I will say this. I don't know how many dicks and balls you've you've socked, fucked, jerked off. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it's the balls that get sweaty. Yeah. The dick. But the balls are right next to the dick. I don't grab my balls to take a pee yeah but how do you know your balls aren't like dripping their juice onto your dick that you touch if i okay here this is conditional yeah if i went to the gym or was going for a walk or was out if i feel and i make up the rules so nobody's perfect i just make up these rules but if i feel like my dick is clean here's what it is if i would feel confident for a lady or a man there's nothing wrong with you know a person to to go down on me if yeah. i feel like i wouldn't be embarrassed and they wouldn't feel if i feel comfortable about that if it's clean enough for a person to what's the kind way of saying it like to blow me to have to give me oral sex? oral sex on you is that the more like clinical version yeah or fillet yeah, but that sounds like a, you're making a joke. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the natural way of speaking would be like, if I were comfortable enough for a girl to suck my dick, that's okay. like, but yeah. that's a little... It's a little crass. So how do you do that? To perform oral sex on me. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? No. Okay, if I were comfortable it enough... It sounds better than so I know, dick. but is there somewhere in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> if I were comfortable enough with a girl to... To go down on you. Go down on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which also assumes that like... What if I'm laying down and she's just standing and go, bending down to her ankles? No, no. Going down is it means it in any form right. you're in. Yeah. So if I were, let's say, with a girl and I were to orally fillet her vagina. Okay. But I were go to go down it, on her. But what if I were to pick her up where her uh, vagina was in my face? Okay. And I'm holding her like this and I'm standing. Is it still going down on? Yeah. What if? Because she's she's up here. You're going down. No, but but she's 
upside down. So she's down upside. No, but at the same time, this will always be down. What if I pick her up and I'm holding her so high that I actually am lifting my chin up to orally flate her vagina? Uh See, it sounds silly to say that. You can't say orally flate her vagina. What do I say? If I were to orally flate her? I think flate is just for the dick. Well, then what is it for a woman? If I were to go down. Cunnilingus. Okay, so if I were to lift up. If I were to lift up a woman to where her vagina was above my chin and I were cunnilinging her. I mean, that's ridiculous. (laughs) There's got to be something. There's got to be a uh, because the subject matter is 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 natural and it's okay to talk about. But there's something very aggressive about eating her pussy. Oh God! Right? I don't like eating her pussy. So what could I say that doesn't sound like a joke, but is still what's not Let's distracting? Just stick with going down on them. But. But what if you're... You gotta... You gotta... Fine. No. So if I lift up... Because when you say go down on, I know what you mean and it doesn't matter okay. what... what uh, okay. You're harping too much on the on the um, specifics. Well, you know, I would argue that a lot of guys don't harp enough on the specifics and that's why a, a woman doesn't get off well enough. Okay. People don't understand the pressure on the G-spot. They, they need to learn these things. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. So anyway, if I were to go down on a girl, there even if I'm holding her and my chin you, is up. You don't need to do all that. I'm <laughs> just saying. You don't, you don't need to <laughs> okay. do all that. Anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I'm comfortable enough for a girl to go down on me. Yes. Okay, to blow me and suck my dick. Oh, come on, though. If I were comfortable enough for a girl to go down on me. Yes. And, and, but specifically, here's the thing. If I were comfortable enough for a girl, and if she were comfortable enough for her to put my penis in her mouth. Okay. And her hand then I don't need to wash my hand after I pee. No. Now, this is an... I o- don't... I don't... Also, think- let me say this. I, I don't think I... Because there's a difference. And I, I, I make him do... I'm, again, I'm talking about when I'm at home. Yeah. When I'm at home. So you don't wash your hands at home, but you do when you're out. When I'm out, I do and... Why? I'll tell you why. And even if I'm in the bathroom alone, it's the same reason. But I've been conditioned. Here's the reason. Shame. I do it because when I pee... I don't want somebody to see me go pee to exit. Right. Okay. So I do it for for show. But I, for me, it's conditioned. I cannot like I cannot leave unless I wash my hands. Anything that's being expelled from my body needs to be washed. There well, needs to be a washing system. You afterwards. have uh, you have uh, bad uh, body image. Wow. Anything that comes or, out of my body needs to be washed. <laughs> I'm. Shocked at this revelation, by the way, from you. Also, I will say this, and it's I'm be, I'm being defensive, but I wash my hands sometimes after I pee, but a lot of times I don't when I'm home. Okay. A lot of times I don't. Always wash after I poop. But you're you're so you aren't you so used to washing your hands after you pee that when you don't, no, you don't I never feel got used to clean? it. No, because I never felt I wash my hands before I pee because I want I don't want to touch my fellatio with oh. with a dirty hand. Do you wash your hands before you eat every meal? Yeah. Okay. I wash my hands before I take ice out of my thing. I wash my hands before I, before I, like, even when I was bringing your tea, I wasn't talking over the thing. I wash, here's, here's what I do. I treat other people the way I'd want to be treated. Uh Uh-huh. At least the way I treat myself. And if I feel like my hands are clean, they're clean. Okay. But after a poop, because here's the thing with a poop, Hmm. you wipe. That's true. Oh, I think that's probably why I'm very big on washing my hands after I pee, because I wipe. Leave a comment, uh, guys or girls, but definitely guys, because guys don't wipe after a pee. Uh-huh. Unless I think if you're circumcised, you wipe. Okay. Let me know. Do you you do a thing? Uh, I do. How do you, if there's a drip? If there's a drip. If. Do you do you do it with your? Yeah. yeah what I do now is, um, I will uh, sometimes. Okay. What? Rick. What? Look at your hands. Is it, is it, uh, is it, what should I do? What, should I not use my hands? I feel like you're exaggerating the girth a little bit there. No, if I, if I'm shaking. Okay. If I'm shaking my penis off. Yes. What I do now is I'll do, I do the, I'll do, I don't do a whole bunch of these because when you go like this, like, yeah. it like you know, when you're nervous handing somebody their tea, yeah. it kind of just will go like this. Uh-huh. So I kind of direct it and I, like you're, like if you have a paintbrush, you don't want to just wiggle it everywhere. It's sure. not just getting on the canvas. Like, oh, Boom. You go like this. I do a couple of those. Yeah. And then what I do is I do kind of a squeeze. Okay. A pull. So I do two flaps, two pulls, and then inevitably I'll still piss 
all over my pants <laughs> when I put it back. <laughs> I pee my pants 20% of the time. Wow. Yeah. That's that's amazing. I mean, that's not amazing. I'm just always like, God, <laughs> dudes and their dicks. What do you mean? Dudes and their dicks. Like the things they have to do. Your second book. <laughs> yeah, dudes and their dicks. Oh, yeah. I have a first book. Which is? The World's Worst Assistant. We'll put an Instagram or a website oh, or hey, whatever. Oh, hey, that's nice. It's my very first plug Did you ever. realize that you have a first book? I forget. It's coming out in July. It's a while from now. Why it's so long? <clears throat> Why the long face? Oh, is that my horse? I don't know. You need a lozenge? Uh, I'm sorry. Tell me why is it so long oh. before it comes out? <laughs> That's just the date they said. But it's ready. No. I mean, it's like it's written. It's being edited. Do I have then, a special thanks in there? No, no. You're not mentioned at, at all huh. in the whole book. Nowhere is your name in the book. I'm not offended. And if it was in there, I'd be flattered. Hey. Hi. It's nice. Oh. Uh, you know. Th- Why would you be offended? I'm not offended that I'm not in there. Oh, okay. Well, for, you know, uh, many years of you as an assistant, I have been around. That's true. And you've said it yourself. My name's Rick. <laughs> so, or your name. I was going to say, you said it yourself that uh, I was a big part of you know, your happiness around Conan, but that's not probably obvious. Is that how I worded it? Yeah. You said that before you say, you say that it's always such a pleasure when I'm in a bad mood, I would look over and, and I would see the card that you gave me. It always puts a smile on my face. You it kind of, you, you know what it did, but I didn't know I said that. Brilliant. Oh my God. I know that I'm this not good soft. at soft. I know. I'm, thank you. I know I'm not good at letting my guests talk. I know that about, and if people, I don't know if that's true. I've talked. Do you feel like I've been overbearing? No, I don't. Should I? Do you? I don't pay attention. Oh, good. I'd say, and I'm, I'm being modest, um, the numbers may be a little higher, but 10% of the episodes have a couple of comments. Let whoever guest is talk. Uh, and I always think, I never get mad. I always think, yeah. I don't know if that's true. And I also, I don't know. I mean... There's people, why are people commenting on that? Like, why are you listening? Opinions are like, uh, you know. Assholes. One in a million. Oh. Oh. Everyone's got one. Yeah, well. Stand up. No, no, I was doing stand up. No, it was just coincidental timing. I was adjusting. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to fart again. No, no. Uh, You know, it's getting to the point to where... uh, as a podcast host, I have learned that, uh, Rick, there are times where it's like, all right, all right, all right. Like, things are going well. That's the end. You know, oh, that's Leave nice. Where- you feel it. You feel it. I, yeah. And I felt it. Not that I wanted it. I felt it a little bit ago. Oh. I just know that when it ends, you leave. And yeah. this is so nice. I like staying too. I do have to eventually go home to my You kids. do? Yeah. <laughs> Which we didn't talk about at all. I know. Well, there's nothing to really talk about. I, I There was a sincere question that I was asking you about motherhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I do have some questions about it because uh, uh, you are uh, responsible for, for three babies now. Uh, that's good. <laughs> are you still Kona's assistant, though? Yeah. No, actually, okay. So after I had but my kids. But we are kids, out of time, unfortunately. Okay. But will you come back again? Of course I will. I'll always come back. All right. Then tell me. Uh, when I left for maternity maternity leave, this guy, David Hopping, took over for Shout me. Shout David. Was in the Shout out to David. He took over for me. And then when I uh, thought it was time for me to start coming back to work, I realized I cannot prioritize Conan the way he should be prioritized with by somebody who's doing that job right so david has sort of taken over the brunt of my assistant duties i'm still around does he wash his hands after an assistant duty poop yeah i'm sure he does he's a very clean person good but Uh, you still do what you do like i'm uh you know what i've been in i've been his assistant for so long that i'm so ingrained in it and my information's connected to so many things that he does that it's inevitable that I, I can't just detach completely, but whatever comes my way, I punt it over to David now, and David handles it. Where does your income come from five years from now? 
Five years from now? I Three mean, years I, from now. I hope I'm still working. For, I love working for Conan. I hope I'm still working for him. Maybe it'll change. Maybe the capacity, my job will evolve. Well, also, it, it he, has evolved. He is uh, not doing a show five days a week now. He's not. No, he's not. So his needs are probably a lot less, right? They're a lot. Yeah, but he's still doing the podcast a lot. Yeah, but are you a... Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's yeah, interesting that's because scheduling, that's, you know, you're doing, but you're not booking I'm guests not doing and producing. That. So also the scheduling aspect, I'm not doing that anymore. That's all David. That, and the booking part is, is this woman, Paula Davis and Gina Batista. They're our bookers and they do Do you think they, they work it. with me? How much does it cost? Uh, way more than you can spend. How much? A lot. More than $50,000 a week? Yes. Oh, a week? Yeah. You're going to spend $50,000 a week? I can't spend $50,000 a week. No. On booking, so why did you throw that out as a number? I could spend thirty thousand a week. Can you? I I I I make I I net almost a hundred thousand dollars a week on this. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. I make a hundred. I make about give or take. I make between a hundred and hundred forty thousand a week on this, and I but I have a lot of expenses. What are your expenses? Animation, uh, editing, help, mixing, uh, bonuses, stuff like you that. You have a staff. Yeah. That's really good, Rick. Yeah. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Disney World. <laughs> Why? You Disneyland is right here. Well, you know, people used to say that after like a, they won the Super Bowl or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't make that much money on the podcast at oh, all. Okay. I was, I was shocked. I don't even own my house. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you do well. You have a really good audience. I'm, I have a great audience. Oh, it's, you guys are some of the best out there. Make some noise. You guys, you know what? A round of applause for the... For the for the everyone who watches the podcast, thank you so much. Make sure you check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash take your shoes off and get exclusive bonus content, live zooms, all the fun stuff. Yeah. But uh, no, I don't make that kind of money. Okay. Um, so you can't afford thirty thousand dollars a week. No. Yeah. Although I was considering, am considering getting a publicist for the first time. I don't think it's. I don't know if it's worth it now. But they're very expensive. Publicists are very expensive. If you have them on retainer, especially, they're, you know. Yeah, but just because my show's coming out now and yeah. I don't know if I'm, but point. But doesn't, doesn't Amazon have, I actually know people who work in the publicity department at Amazon. Uh, Kiva, shout out to Kiva. He's putting Instagram oh, up Kiva. here. Oh, Kiva. He did Undateable. Coincidentally, yes. he worked for NBC at the time. Yes, He's and my, great. my friend Melissa Armstrong, I think, still works there. I don't know. That's the oh, thing. right. Uh, oh, hey, my car's ready. All right, well, we'll wrap it up soon. Yeah, Let's we stay, should. Stay for a couple minutes more, okay? Okay, couple. I have to pee. Uh, do it. And you know what? I'm going to wash my hands after. Well, what should we cut to while you go pee? No, no, no. We'll wait till we're done. Well, then we got to end now. If you have to pee, we'll just end it. Yeah. Well, but real quick, what were we saying? Oh, the booking thing. I want to find a the booking. I want to find book and help. That's uh, a big, that's the next step. But uh, I don't know if, I'll, if that'll happen. Will you, can you really pay? Like a uh, no. competitive amount? No. Okay, then never mind. I know. Uh, I will say, though, there is a world where every now and then, uh, once a month, you uh, talk to one of your guests live on the air. No. Nope. And you know, let me finish. Yeah. You don't know sorry, what I'm Sorry, go say. ahead, finish. And suggest. No. Sorry, I'm so sorry. That's fine, never mind. That's yeah. Sona no. Metsosian. Ugh. Mav. Uh, yeah, I really want to help you. Come on. You can't even you don't pronounce know my, you didn't my, know my name last name. Right. You didn't know my last name until today. Glassman. Yeah, today. Yeah. You, your last name is harder than Glassman. Glassman. Mavsosian. Mavsosian. Mauve. Um, you know what my problem is? I'm messing up the... I'm saying Mav. Mauve. Once the Mauve, Sessian is child's play. Ch so Sessian. I'm Sessian. Yeah. But what I was going to say, just let me say it. It's not going to be what you think. Okay. On the air. So no. So I'm so sorry. I don't know why I did that so I think quickly. You, go ahead. What do you go think ahead. I'm going to say? Go ahead. What do you think I'm going to say? Because you're wrong. I think you're going to ask me to ask the guests that we book on our podcast to come do your podcast on the air while we're recording. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with that? No. Why? Why? You're going to. No. I, what, you want to no. do it off air then? But that's, then it doesn't no, plug my podcast. No, I don't want to do it at all. Why won't you do that? Do you think I, I do it for even, you? I want to do the minimal amount of work it's on not our work. podcast. It's not work. Yes, it is. The reason you're not doing it is because it's too much work. The reason you're not doing it is because you feel it's out of place. Yes. And transactional and it makes yes. you feel uncomfortable. Yes. So you lied for your reasoning. My question for yeah. you is if you start a podcast. Uh, yeah, which won't happen. Of course not, because that's too much work. You There's a difference. So much. Do you think I would do that for you? No. 
Are you kidding? And not only that, I would never ask you to do that for me. Oh, you wouldn't have to. It would have happened. I would at the end of every 100% of my podcast. Would In you? Fact, I'm going to start doing that now for a little bit to see so see how it feels. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start saying, listen, a friend of mine, Sona Movsesian, there you go. is starting a podcast maybe around July when her book comes out, okay. which we're very excited about. We'll put a link up here because okay. I love your books. Yeah. I love the one, My Dick and My Darling, My Hamburger, My Dick or whatever. My Dick and My Hamburger. Uh, where uh, I'm gonna, I would ask every guest at the end, it, no obligations we could set up later, but if you're interested, she's so funny and charming and also she's just really good at what she does. Yeah. You should consider going on her podcast. I'm going to end all my podcasts that way. Well, Brent has a podcast. Why didn't he was just talking to you about, you know, the booking issues that he had. Why didn't you help him out? I said I would. But you didn't. Do you want, do you want to know? Do you want to know what I told him? Huh. Do you have time or do you want to pee first? No, I have time. Okay. I said, anybody that you want me to ask, I would ask. It doesn't mean that they'll do it. Right. And he says, yeah, I just don't think that they'll, they'll do it. I've asked a lot of people and we know a lot of the same people. He yeah. said, no. And I said, here's the truth. I don't think a lot of people will do it. And I had this problem too, because a lot of people who you would want to have on are being more selective. And if they feel like they're not going to get enough numbers, as superficial as it sounds, it's the truth about what this stuff is. They're not going to want to do it if they don't want to do it. Yeah. I, who am a huge presence in the podcast game now, don't feel, I would do his podcast. I don't, because he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. I don't care. That being said, I absolutely would ask anybody. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, you know, he's a friend, I guess, and not just... Oh. All right. Hello? Um, okay. Uh, can we end this with something? Oh, here's what we'll do. And I'll just uh, play this clip at the end of all podcasts that I do from near out to my guests. Listen, a friend of mine, Sonam Obsessian, as I think is starting a podcast. I'm not sure. I'll let you know. But it's it would be somewhere around July when her book comes out. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking to do more spots whenever you want to promote something, I highly recommend going on his podcast. It's very, very good. Yeah. All right. That's nice. Well, that's Sonam Obsessian for her third appearance on Take Your Shoes Off. Is yeah. there anything you want to plug? Uh, No. Do me a favor, just for practice. Yeah. Why don't you plug my podcast? And see what it would sound like. Do you want to say, do you want me to really do it? I'm going to be, okay, so let's say, who's in, who's in the room with us? Jeff Goldblum. Okay, so Jeff Goldblum's on. Hey, hey Jeff. Uh, yeah, first, yeah, yeah. All, all, already, I'm uncomfortable. Uh, uh, Jeff, I know I didn't speak barely at all no, during you, this you, entire you, interview. You, you spoke good. You were hysterical. But I want to take this opportunity to say the most that I've said to you in the years that you've been coming on the show and say, hey, Go on my friend's but what podcast. You're do- what you're doing is sabotaging both of us. Yes. Here's another way to because do it. Because it's awkward that I'm already asking him to do this because I don't talk to him. You know You know what? That there's your first problem. I How- should talk to him. You should start talking more and stop, stop feeling like you're an assistant to the podcast and realize that you're more than a featured player. You are, you are one of the pillars of it. I am definitely a featured player. And... The interviews are so much better when I'm not talking. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. But okay. if you weren't there, it wouldn't be as good. Well, that's very nice of you to say, but I think I know my place. Other than these type of bits, have I ever asked to go on your show? No, not as, no. no. I don't think you have. Nor will I. Oh, you will be like, hey, you want to come on? Oh, of oh, course I would. it's different if I offer Yeah, it I will you. never ask. I know that you know that I have a show coming out and that how funny okay. I am. And want to, if you All ever right. want to ask, but okay. I would never ask. All right. I never asked to go on Dax's podcast. He's been on mine multiple times. I don't ask to go on Brent's. I don't yeah. ask to go on people's pod. And I, a couple times I've asked people. But yeah. I don't really ask. Okay. But is there anybody you feel comfortable asking? No, not a single person. No, not, not a single person. I'm going to wait to put this podcast episode out until you ask somebody. Okay. <laughs> I, like this is, I need an episode <laughs> to come out. I don't give a shit, <laughs> Rick. Booking's just so fucking hard. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I know booking, it must be really tough. It's the I don't know how you do that on your it's own. Probably, it's one of the hardest parts of this. And our bookers have been in the game for so long and are so good and so well connected. And even then, who it's, would, it's, Why uh, would anybody say no, especially if it's Zoom? And you have to pee. I could talk to you for hours. No, uh, not a lot of people, I don't think, do say no. Right, so... The bookers, I feel, not to take away from the bookers, they're great, we'll put the screen handle up here, but I think their job is more so thinking of people and knowing their phone numbers or email addresses. Because well, yeah, that's part of it, but it's also uh, when should they come on, what are they promoting, oh, are the people coming aspect, in right. prom- promoting something? So it's almost like, like PR, f- too. Of course it is, yeah. Right. They work with publicists, like, you know, I mean. What does it cost? What, what does what cost? You said how expensive it is. What is that kind of, if I needed someone like that? 
What would I be paying? I have no idea. I mean, we're looking. If you want a really good booker? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. Could a good booker help somebody who's not a Conan? Uh, a good booker? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. My, my old roommate. I mean, I'm uh, getting fucking Charles Barkley on the podcast. Well, who was saying? How did you do that? Uh, it's a long story, and I haven't talked about it yet, and I kind of wanted to talk about it with him. Okay. Then don't talk about it with me. It's not the longest story, but it's, uh, I met him and I brought it up as a joke and, uh, he said, yes, I didn't tell him anything about it. And I, he was joking. Is he coming here? I don't know. Okay. Uh, but it it is going to be in LA. Okay. Um, and, uh, then I had, uh, a friend who's a publicist that part of this blah 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 reach out and he's because uh, he was joking but i was d- as a you know following up as a joke or whatever and he said yeah and charles That's, barkley's coming on you know i mean you know what you got a nice one he's nice all right uh, not that not that he shouldn't come on but you know he's probably gets asked to do a lot of things yeah and uh, i think you should be flattered i am i really do have to pee and Sonam i really have to go home. it was a pleasure uh, real quick though, you didn't plug the podcast, so go ahead and practice it in case it comes out. Okay. You don't even have to ask the guest. Just if, if you are on Conan, you're like, by the way, I was doing Rick Lassen's podcast. Oh, I remember Rick. He's the guy that asked me. Yeah, Conan. Actually, let me tell you something. His podcast. How would you do it like that? What would it sound like? I like can't if, even as a joke. Pretend. Just pretend. Uh, hey, so uh, I was doing my friend Rick's podcast. Oh, and Rick. Then- he's the guy that he's always asking for the Simpsons poster. Yeah. He's really, really, really funny. You think Conan's gonna say that? Okay. He thinks it. He, he thinks it, but you think he's going to say that? Fine. Do it again. And then you, because you have to pee. Hurry this up. Okay, one more time. All right. All right. So I was doing my friend Rick's podcast. Yeah, I know Rick. He's the guy that always asks for the Simpsons stuff. Exactly. Yeah, I like Rick. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That That's more realistic. What's uh, more realistic? I like him. Yeah, me too. How, wh- how, oh, I'm was sorry, it good? We're still doing a thing. I, I mean, what? I don't act. Okay. Is there something you wanted to say about the yes, podcast? I want to say, hey, you should do it. Oh, I don't think so, but I would love people to check it out. So give it a plug. Uh, take your shoes, shoes off. Take your shoes off. Okay. Podcast. Maybe I will do it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Stick around for the untitled card where you're going to be recommended last week's episode, one of Sona's episodes, and some other one. My name's Rick Glassman, as, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Scoot do. Hi, darling. Hi, Mom. I have a question. I recorded a podcast. I told a story about you that I want your approval for. What is it? And if you're not okay with it, um, I could bleep your name and any pronouns so nobody will know who in the house I'm speaking of. But I told I told a little story of the the uh, the speed from flush to door open. Oh, I don't care. I could talk about the. Uh, the fingertip yeah, water care. wash? Yes, I don't care. All right. Well, happy new year to the Tyso goblins. Yeah, absolutely. I don't give a shit. Well, you do all over your hands, but that's not the point, I guess. <laughs> no, I keep a shit all over my hands. I don't give a shit all over my hands. All right. Well, happy new year to thank all of you, you. And make sure to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash take your shoes off. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Love you. Bye. Oh, yeah. That's a old Polaroid. That's great. One, two, three, four, five.